What is up, everybody? Happy Sunday. Welcome to Seanth and Jetty Art. I am Seanth and Jetty, live, live, everybody, from the heart of Lovecraft country in the birthplace, birthplace of religious liberty. Welcome, welcome, welcome. We are doing some painting, and I hope everybody's having a wonderful Sunday. Let's see who we've got here in the chat. And of course, of course, my man, my main man, my can of spam. It's all about Canada, folks. Stephen Rockwood drawing. God bless you. It's wonderful to see you here this Sunday um, and uh, to be working on Nosfero 2 and to be in this amazing and incredible space that we have here. It is great to see you. We also have Blue Boy Comics in the house. Uh, I still think Stephen Rockwood drawing was first, uh, but you're first in spirit. That's what we'll say. I hope you guys are doing well and uh, I am doing some artwork. I did a big trip with uh, the wonderful, the lovely Mrs. Jetty. To the post office to uh we did a huge uh drop off huge drop off of books um and things are are going well trucking along and making plans for the second chance campaign we're gonna be launching that sooner rather than later i'm still packing up these books but i gotta launch that soon um because um yeah we need it we need to get um more books out there and get another campaign going because uh this stuff don't pay for itself folks it's a lot of hard work so let me see we got prater 70 or what is up oh my gosh Praetor 7, that's exactly what I needed to hear on this Sunday. Praetor 7 received my copy of Nosfero. Haven't had a chance to read it yet, but it's gorgeous. Thank you so much, Praetor 7. I really could use that today. Uh, always appreciate it, my friend. Always appreciate it. Um, Mr. Monkey Boy 1969, how are you doing, my friend? It is great to see you guys. Um, I have been uh, working my tail off. Like I said, Mrs. And Jetty and I um, you know, brought a bunch of books. Uh, to the post office, got those in the mail, been signing all morning, <laughs> evening and night in terms of uh, and sealing and all that stuff, these things. And it's great. And I'm really looking forward to the Second Chance campaign. I'm really looking forward to Nosfero too. I've found that when I'm not working on Nosfero, even though I've been working on a bunch of different stuff, um, when I'm not working on Nosfero, I don't know, I'm, I'm not happy. I mean, honestly, this this project, this book, and this character in this world is a place that has so many of the things that I love about, you know, horror and, um, gosh, gothic romance and all of that stuff that, that makes my soul sing. And when I'm not working on it, I miss it. I miss it tremendously. You know, these characters and this world that... Um, that I've created for these characters and, and this landscape. Let me move the mic a little closer. Sorry if that's loud, but I just realized it was uh, it was a little distance away. Oh gosh, you know what I just realized? I've got my camera effects on from a previous stream. Let's get rid of those so you guys can see things a little bit better. Um, and then let me go into the Razer Kayo camera stuff and see if I need to adjust the gamma down. There we go. That's a little better. You guys can see things hopefully a little bit more clearly now. But I hope it's a wonderful Sunday in your neck of the woods. Uh, things are actually kind of nice here. We've had some decent weather. We've had some rainy weather. There have been ups and downs, but that's what you get here in Lovecraft Country, man. New England, our old saying is, if you don't like the weather, just wait a minute, because it will change. There we go. Just trying to make sure my hand isn't casting a shadow. But we have been at this now, at this YouTube thing, for five years at this comic skate thing, I want to say for about six years. And, you know, to see this book come together with uh, all the amazing support you guys have been given has been fantastic. And I was talking to my best friend. You guys know, if you're a channel member, you've seen the video where I introduce him because I don't just put him out there on the internet. You got to be a channel member to see uh, my brother Nick, who, if you back this book, you know. He is um, always mentioned just under my family because I consider him family uh, in all of my books. And I should, what I should have done, and I should have done, um, you know, put this in the book, is that um, because he's my brother first and first and forced first and foremost, uh, I didn't even think to point out the fact that he, who is an incredibly brilliant man and uh, award-winning science fiction artist and academic. He and uh, my Mrs. Lauren were essentially the editors on this book. And so it really was incredibly helpful to have them there and him as an extra set of eyes. He's a terrific guy. 
And whenever I've got a story thing, because of his understanding of film history and fiction, I can run those things by him, and he's great. Leg kick one! Oh! Leg kick one, I needed to hear that today. Thank you. It's been an exhausting... It's been a very exhausting... Um, yeah, it's been a very exhausting couple of weeks, guys. And I don't, you know... I, I love you guys being in here and doing these streams and everything like that. It is so fantastic. And it, it lifts me up, man. It's really great stuff. And, you know, Nosferu is... It's a story that, you know, I really, you know, care about. And I really put a lot of love, time, and attention into it. And I think it's... it's um, I hope it's uh you guys find it as a beautiful story and an inspiring story and leg kick one thank you so much i when i saw that on twitter you know never underestimate the importance of the support that we get both in terms of on youtube but and on our our indiegogos and on our campaigns because um it means a ton and when i went online and i saw leg kick one posting you know i got the book oh man it put me in such a great mood and I really, I really appreciate that because there are times when, you know, when we're doing this kind of work and, uh, I was thinking about it, it's, we're very much on our own and we're very much, um, it's very much an independent process. And I've been working as a, the first job I ever did in comics, uh, as a, you know, again, as a freelance illustrator was when I was 17 and I was used to, and I've been used to ever since then, the, uh, the long hours, the isolation of that kind of thing. But I think it's it's also that sense of, you know, the importance that we have of having those connections with with folks who understand our work, folks who support it, um, and um, and yeah, other creators who understand, you know, what we're what we're up against and what we're we're working towards. And uh, whenever I have those times when I need that, what's up, American Discord? How are you doing, brother Shelby? It's great to see you in the house. Uh, and I hope you're doing very, very well. Thank you so much, brother. I, that, gosh, it's like, it's like a positivity intervention. Just what I needed. Um, afternoon, everybody. Afternoon, Mark's music obsession. Okay, I got to address this leg kick one. UFC 300 was insane. Was insane. And, um, yeah. Yeah. When you see the main event, that is the definition of leaving it all in the ring. And not only as as fighters, but as sportsmen. And and Leg Kick won. That that was I watched that I watched all of the greatest hits, no pun intended, from UFC three hundred over and over and over again almost all night. Like that was excellence should be honored and it was. It was last night by the fans. Um, win, lose, or draw. There was there was so much integrity on display and character, and I was really inspired by it. Really inspired by it, um, and uh, it was it was crazy. And that's great. Uh, let's see here. Peace, looking good. Um, okay, happy Sunday. Great to see you, Comrade Sam. Yeah, hopefully it's not buffering. It's a, a hard line, so we'll see how it goes. But. Yeah, I saw I saw some gentlemen in their craft conduct themselves in such a way that it really inspired me for what I do in my craft because um, I'm obviously a massive boxing fan. I've started to get into um, started to get into MMA because um, for me I was watching MMA, but I needed to understand MMA better in order to enjoy it because I like the sweet science of the sport. And when you add all of these different elements into it, it takes a while. Like I do things like this morning I woke up and I was watching um, a video somebody did deconstructing the Soviet boxing style and the pendulum bounce. Like those are things I do to just relax, you know, and enjoy things. Um, let me see here. Leg kick one. All the creators we back and enjoy should be given some encouragement. Thank you so much. And recognition boost their confidence. It will only get better. It is important. Thank you. Yeah, I was I was talking with my my brother this morning about that, and I said, you know, doing the right thing is is important. It, you know, and I've it's something that I've worked very hard to demonstrate both to my kids, to my wife, to my family, and back in the day to my students. 
And sometimes when you do that, you are on your own. A lot of times, actually, I should say, when you do that, you are on your own. And um, kind words are very powerful and very affecting, which is why I always try to offer them uh, to fellow creators and, you know, to to folks I just meet in general out and about. And um, it's yeah, it was it was really great. I can imagine, you know, um, for those fighters just seeing the the enthusiasm and support from the fans when they're heading out to the octagon and um and cheering them you know in those final 10 seconds i mean you can't make that stuff up you know and yeah and couldn't agree more yeah absolutely agreed uh, mike likes tacos always puts a smile on my face it's great to see you mike i hope you're doing well thank you for being here on this fine sunday i hope it's nice in your neck of the woods but i've been yeah i've been spending a lot of time um you know, just, I, I sort of stepped back, uh, yesterday and today. And I think it's also, you know, I was on a stream. I think it was the days all blend together. I don't know when it was, but I was on a stream with, uh, John Malin the other night and I was showing all the different stuff I do and, and all the different kinds of work I do. And someone was, you know, very complimentary in the, the chat. They were saying, my God, this guy's got a lot of talent. He's got a lot of stuff going on. But what was really funny was at some point, I mentioned that I have uh, two kids going off to college, and somebody made a, a very charming and wonderful comment, which was going, "Oh my God, I didn't, you know, I didn't know, <laughs> I didn't know you were that old." And um, yeah, it's been. I'm not only have I been been trying to fight the good fight, but I've been doing it not only in Comicscape for a long time, but I've been doing it in my life for a very long time. And I think that that I might not be the uh, the best at you know, um, you, one, taking a break and taking some downtime and really taking downtime in a way that recharges me, but also, um, also something I, I, you know, made an effort to try to get better at is just reaching out to people and, and things like that for support here every now and again. And, and it really can't be overstated that, you know, what we, what we do here in, in comics gate, one of the things that's really important is, is having a fan base that has your back. And there's a number of, of reasons why this has been on my mind lately. Um, and I don't have to get into, you know, recent events to talk about this kind of thing. But also, you know, in my own biography and what's been going on in my life, which is, you know, I think I said this on the um, on the 9th. But April 9th was the uh, the 11 year anniversary of me getting my um, offered my first full time position after years and years of working in academia and i remember how excited i was when i accepted that job i'm still incredibly proud of all of that but it it does put into context you know the sacrifices um that i have made and and what that was like for me i mean it was to me it was the realization of something that was very powerful and very important and it it i would say this is that i was thinking i guess i was thinking about how proud i was of one making the decisions but also this accomplishment because you know when you when you do something really well and you work very hard at it and you gain a skill and the same thing is holds for art um you're usually on your own when you're developing that skill and so there's not only is it the 11 year of that but this um academic year will be the um be the 10 year anniversary of when I gave a commencement address, I was picked by the student body my first year teaching to give a faculty address there. And so these were very big milestone moments in my career, like my first job in comics and getting to work with Len Wein and all of that, those amazing things that sort of happened. So I imagine I'll feel, um, I haven't done as good of a job as I should marking anniversaries in Comicscape, but those things are, are wildly important, you know? Hello, awesome one. Hey, awesome one says Mark's Music Obsession channel member and rock star. Awesome one is here. Hola, hola, awesome one. It's great to see you, brother. And uh, yeah, so let me talk to you guys a little bit about, um, you know, Nosferu 2 and Nosferu and this world and then some of the other stuff that I've been, you know, working on and, and writing on. Because I did say in the description, Nosferu and more. So... I've been, when I am not painting, not packing, not shipping, uh, and I literally, because I physically can't do those things, 
I've been working on both Nosferu, Spring Ball, actually I should have said, uh, and another thing that may be a short story, I'm not sure what it is, which is that um, Monster Rat Kin of Cthulhu, which was my sort of um, homage concept to the original Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles. But I've been working on all of these things. But the cornerstone for me, or the keystone for all of it, is Nosferu. And the thing that, and, and then the keystone outside of that, has been what kind of things do I want to put in front of the reader that are going to hopefully leave them feeling entertained, some beautiful painting, some sexiness, some mysteriousness, some danger. But also I try to really write to things that are affirming because I think that people are, um, people are really needing that right now. I know I am. You know, I, I don't know if uh, I'm up in any shape, form, or fashion for the theater of alienation. You know, the theater theater of, well, it's all kind of pointless um, and nihilism. And that's probably why Give Nihilism uh, No Quarter has kind of become my rallying uh, <laughs> my rallying cry. Because it's it really is. It's about it's about having the metal, the mind. Uh, and the discipline and the skill honed over time to be able to make the work we do and to be able to be in a space um, where you don't have that that massive, um, you know, um, industry support and oftentimes working against you. And, um, you know, that's that was the interesting thing to me, which is um, that's a through line with Nosferu. Nosferu is doing the right thing. And he's doing what he does because, and th oh, I love seeing the Nosferu <laughs> channel members emojis. I wish they would show up in here, but I love seeing that Mark. It's so great. And, um, but yeah, man, it's, that's the thing that's so cool about working on this book. This book really does make me, and all the stuff I'm working on makes me think, um, what could I, what could I say today? Or what could I say with this work? Cause it's going to, it takes a lot of time. It's meticulous, a lot of skill to put this stuff together but what could i say that would put people in a better place you know what would put people in a mindset of yeah yeah let's go let's go let's go and sometimes you know to be honest um i always try to imagine things that um i think i'd need to hear you know at various points in my life and even now and so in no sparrow 2 that is is really about flipping this oh gosh i don't want to give any spoilers away i've already got to try to avoid a little bit spoilers for issue one uh because i haven't got all this out yet but um it's really about flipping the script and putting uh evil on its heels which i think is important you know um when you look at the grandeur and the um the grandeur with which the malevolence in hp lovecraft's work is articulated brilliantly I will hands down my favorite author. Um, increasingly, it's it's just becoming more and more obvious. That's just there's nobody close to him for me. But when you look at that idea, good is always um, fighting in retreat and on its back foot. You know, it it's countering and throwing jabs and just trying to. And sometimes it's actually in full retreat. And I've been thinking about the concept of in that kind of world in a Lovecraftian. Um, scenario from the start it's what's going to happen um, or what would I create to make it be evil that's on retreat and that's why you know Nosferu it is the name that makes ghouls and demons or is the name that ghouls and demons dare not say for they know it means death for the undead um, that whole thing comes out of it that was the idea and it's the same thing with the character that I'm introducing and the mythos I'm introducing in um in book two, Nosferu two. Yeah, but I'm using um, for those of you guys watching. What's up, Devil Flyer Momentum? How are you doing, my friend? Great to see you, and thank you for the kind words. I appreciate it. Yeah. So, um, for those of you guys who are artists who are tuning in or just interested, I'm using Pelican Pan opaque watercolors on this piece. I've been using these since I was in college. They're a little bit like uh, Japanese poster paint that's used in animation for backgrounds but it's an opaque watercolor which is essentially like a gouache and then I use a little bit of white gouache with it because the white tube that comes with it is no good and uh, that's the that's the method I use and it gives this really beautiful opaque but also um, playful wash stylistic and I can use it on a variety of different surfaces 
and uh, with great effect. And uh, man, I tell you what, the stuff, the stuff I'm working on, the stories I'm working on, everything is um, is going to be cool. Like for Monster Rat, uh, Monster Rat Kin of uh, Thulu, the angle I've been taking with it is, um, gosh, reaffirming faith. That's definitely a big aspect of it. it my stuff is very much about um, about the power of faith in the, in the same way that. Um, the character in my favorite book, Dracula, uh, Abraham Van Helsing was like that. That was a huge factor. What's up, Edwin the Ace? Volume 3 coming soon. Acevedo, I love that. I love that. How are you doing, my friend? Um, is there a sign-up list for that, Edwin? Because if there is, one of my mods uh, should, put it in the, um, should put it in the chat. So yeah, let me know if there's a... Um, if there's a... Uh, a uh, sign up page for that because uh, I would love to get that out there. And also there is a, uh, my uh, description. If you go down to um, support independent creators, we've got the sign up uh, list for Vaughn's terror in the trenches too. We've got um, graveyard shift. I think we have, I don't even know what campaigns I have in there at this point, but I've got a bunch of different campaigns down there. So do check them out. Do give them a look and uh, hail to you, Edwin. Um, Let's see. Yes, sir. There is. Okay. Excellent. Our Lunaverse. Great to see you. Welcome. I hope you're having a wonderful Sunday. Could one of my mods uh, do... Oh, actually, uh, let's see. Devil Flyer is a mod. Could one of my mods get the link to that uh, sign up in the chat for me, please? Please and thank you. Uh, I do appreciate it. Let's see here. All right. Yeah, this is... Um, the world is definitely going to be expanding in Nosfero in terms of... Um, the first, the first story in so many ways is about figuring it out and figuring out, for me, how it's, I don't know how to describe it, the ABCs of it, so to speak. And now that I've got that, you know, I've broken the static friction with the story, uh, I think that it's about getting the chance to play in it for the first time. So when I'm working on this stuff, I have a completely different, um, there was no source material <laughs> to look at on book one. I didn't have a reference guide. When I'm working on this, it's so funny, you know, to think about what we do here. It's so complicated and it's so insane that it it defies description or it defies easy description. So, um, much like uh, the chaotic nature of my desk, but uh, where the heck did I put that? It must be here then. That's weird. Huh. Thought I had it kicking about. Um... But it's the same thing with, uh... okay, now I'm determined to find it. Um... There we go. Gosh, that only took a little bit of digging to get to. Um, but yeah, I have this to look at. And this is, this is what it's about. You know, this is what it's about. It's having this to look at and go, oh, okay, I know, I know what these characters are about. <laughs> It's a relief, man. It's an absolute relief to have that. And, you know, the world of it, the world of these characters is very rich. And it's it's like I, I mean, it was such an insane idea. One, to do a fully painted comic book. But, you know, also to, um, to just think about what would it be like to do something that's in the vein of, you know, Frank Frazetta and all of my favorite you know, artists and illustrators, and then do it as a comic book. And, you know, there's this style. I was down in the uh, the basement, and I was looking at and finding some old comics, which was really cool to see that I forgot I had. But I was down there, and I was looking at stuff, and I came upon some of my first professional jobs I did right out of college. And um, one of the things was a painting I did when I came back from my honeymoon, and that was 20-something year, odd years ago. My gosh. And it was the first time I tried this painted Art Nouveau style as a comic book page. Now, that's a long time ago that I was like, oh, like, I'd love to make work in this style. So from that moment, which would have been, what, maybe 2000, 2001, I don't even know. Uh, from that moment to Nosferu is how long I've been trying to develop this stuff. That's how long. Hail Rex! Indeed. 
Uh, let me see here. So we got all our people here. Thank you so much, guys, for hitting the like. And uh, make sure you're subscribed to this channel. I'm sure you are. And I thank you for that very, very much. Let me see here. Okay, where am I? Where am I? All right, over here. But I mean, that was the craziness of it. The madness of it was figuring out what kind of paper and brushes. Like I've been in R&D for what would become the stylistic that everybody knows is my work for a very long time. And, and for those of you guys who backed and got art books one and two, uh, one, I thank you for that. And you guys are getting a look at the very first baby steps in art book two, which was called Rigor More Treks, because uh, Treks is in the title of all of my um, my art books. The first one was Autonomous Treks, because that's when I was sort of realizing that uh, I needed to build something of my own. Um, and, uh, and so that was the meaning of it. But um, it was it was crazy because I this would have been I don't know how long ago November third two thousand nineteen I think um, God that's going back a ways but um, and I'm so grateful for this it was so funny Ethan showed my work on stream I had sent him a message just to kind of pep talk message because he was going through a really tough time and. Um, a really tough time and he showed my work on stream and you know he's got a lot going on and he's like going yeah and this guy's doing artwork and 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 you know he he's he's got an art book coming out and he's gonna do comics and i went oh crap there's no there's no comics in this it's just an art book but that inspired me to do um a one-page comic story just for fun like a test and then a two-page comic story just for fun another test and i went maybe yeah, maybe I could do this because those weren't comic skate books. I mean, that was just my fan base that I built on um, on Instagram. And but if it wasn't for that, I I really and I was trying to think about doing comics, but that made me commit to it. And uh, when you commit to um, and, and comics and I I've worked in comics, I've done all this sort of stuff, but painted comics. Whew, that's another kettle of fish. And, uh, and so, yeah, that really kind of got me to try it. And once I tried it, I go, I think the next thing I have to do is I need to do a comic, do a comic and be in Comicscape for this because, um, this is where it's at for me. And I love comics. I mean, I can't say it any better than my wife's intro does. If you have the book, you've read my wife's intro and, um, whenever I'm feeling exhausted and sort of spiritually dry or on the ropes, um, I'll read that and, uh, it's definitely nice to know there's a human being on the planet uh who gets you and knows what you're about because you know like i said we need our support systems we absolutely need our support systems let me see here okay i don't want to block that here guys let me see if i move this camera over just a little bit you can see this um mighty geek studio says um i discovered painted comic books in the early 1990s from independent publishers because they were trying to stand out for marvel and dc 100 percent um I was actually looking at that book right now on Indiegogo. Wow. Oh, thank you so much, Mark. Yeah, that book was crazy. Thank you, Green Laser, man. It is great to see you, my friend. Absolutely great to see you. Michael, how are you doing, my friend? Always put a smile on my face, brother. It is great to see you, man. It is great to see you. See what else I miss. Don't worry. There'll be more opportunities because we need that money coming in, guys. So, yeah, there will definitely be more opportunities. Um to keep all this stuff going, my God. But, um, but yeah, I mean, it was, these were crazy times, man. And, and just wild times artistically. And sometimes, you know, I'm sure you guys have this. It's not always, always a great idea to look back and it's not always a great idea to, um, you know, to, 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 I, I try to just kind of keep my mind on what I'm doing right now. But I will say that, um, I used to look back at my artwork for a very long time and all I saw was um, flaws. But now, since I've been doing this crowdfunded stuff, you know, since uh, the Instagram thing blew up and now with, with um, Comicsgate, the thing about it that's been really amazing is I look back at that stuff and what, regardless of what else is going on in there, I'm just so proud of the work because I know how much it takes to take something from, you know, zero and get it to where it is right now. My glasses just fell off my nose here. Um, oh, great. Thank you so much, man. I appreciate that. It's great to see you too, brother. And Mighty Geek Studios in the house. It is great to see you, Mighty Geek. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, I mean, for me, Slain was big for that. Solar Flares catching up again. 
Net reboot, lots, lots. Oh, dear. Yeah, I know. Things are crazy. Hey, Katie, how are you doing? I hope you were doing well. Um, yeah, I mean, it's it's wild. Oh, man. How did I get all that paint? Was that just from holding my brush up? I was reading the chat, and I tipped my brush back, and all this paint ran down the... Um, and down the handle of the brush so i must have been um must have really loaded that up with paint man craziness but yeah this these are art forms that um i don't want to say they're lost but these are art forms that are increasingly rare and i don't know if i would have had you know if we certainly didn't have the technology to show the process of making them like let me see what i can do here i'm going to see if i can use this wild newfangled robot to do what I need to do. There we go. I'm going to just show you guys some of the stuff that happens with uh, with the texture on this as I work. Just kind of moving the brush in. There we go. That's the stuff I kind of live for, is where the paint sort of just does those little tricks that it does. I mean, it takes so much. For me, I was so conscious when I was painting that, you know, it was it was stressful. Like, I, I was, oh gosh, I was, in, I was a drawer. I was, le I was, I'm probably a natural painter. That's probably how I, I was meant to be. But I was never comfortable with color. I was never comfortable with those tools until I was much older. Like, we're talking a little bit into college, but mainly post-college, kind of learning on my own. And now I can't even imagine my life without it. It's like so many things, man. Like so many things you can't imagine your life without. I mean, I mean, it's wild. <laughs> you guys just caught me just having an introspective moment or attempting to have one. I've joked on these streams before that um, one of the things I've learned about myself recently, which probably helps me with the fact that I can talk and paint at the same time, is that I don't have that kind of uh, internal um, introspection voice where I hear my own voice in my head. I can remember things. I can listen to music, movies, and and scenarios like that, but I don't. I don't have that. And I thought everybody else didn't have it. And like, I thought that Seinfeld was made up when people did that. And they were like going, wow, what is this person thinking about me? I was like, oh, that's like word balloons in comics, which I also thought were some amazing fictional thing. So that's something I've been really chewing over lately. And so sometimes you'll hear me like just kind of laugh because I'll just like, you know, realize something that I'm doing or whatever. And uh, <laughs> it just cracks me up. Oh my God. Yeah. But it's, it's definitely explained a lot of, um, a lot of interactions I've had that I have not always understood. Um, my favorite one is, um, the, uh, tendency of people to read subtext into, uh, very simple statements has been something that I've thought a lot about. It's wild off to Starbucks, right on, man, get some coffee, wake up. That's what we got to do. What's up, Shadowhawk Talks? It's great to see you. Rex, Mighty Geek, Katie, Hale, Edwin, Ace, indeed, indeed. And if somebody um, hasn't yet, if, uh, if a mod, uh, let's see here, uh, Suspiria from Chaos Comics was an excellent painted comic book about a witch from the Southwest. Wow, that sounds awesome. Um, if somebody has not yet, um, Edwin the Ace, volume, I'm sorry, the Ace Volume 3 from uh, Edwin Acevedo is uh, coming soon. So if anybody... Um, has that link to the sign up for that feel free to put that in the chat i would love to get uh, that link in the chat so yeah i've had several people who have explained that to not having an internal monologue but having um a very strong visual memory just they're incredulous they cannot believe that's the case and so um not that i'm saying that this is the reason this has to happen but I've realized that a lot of times when I would say things that I meant very literally, people would um, read subtext into it to a degree that made absolutely no sense. It's like you say, um, I'll give you a perfect example. It's like you say to somebody, have a nice day. And they're like, what do you mean by that? And I go, have a nice day? <laughs> it's freaking hilarious. Oh, my God. 
But as you know, if you follow this channel for a long time, I'm just happy watching my HD trains, Blu-rays, and um, <laughs> spending time with my wife and kids and with you guys here doing this artwork. But I think that's probably might be one of the reasons why I can paint and talk. Because um, maybe if I had that, I would be thinking an entirely different verbal-based line of thinking while I paint it, which I just don't do, you know? Cranberry Landers, how are you doing, my friend? I get that exact same thing. Thank you. You know what I'm talking about. That's why I'm moving again. <laughs> yeah, that's right. Hey, Sean. Hey, Chad. Happy Sunday. Happy Sunday to you, Cranberry Landers. How are you doing, brother? Ah, uh, there we go. Devil Flyer has it. Thank you, Devil Flyer. You rock. I appreciate that. Yeah. You know, that's what it's about, man. It's it's about the support. It's about all the cool stuff we do here. And it's about independence, you know. Um, and it's it, sometimes I know it's tricky. Sometimes I know it's frustrating, you know, um, for creators in this space. And, and I'm not immune to it. But um, you guys, you guys are, are so important in terms of just your, your encouragement, your support for what we do. You know, your financial backing is everything. It just does not... It does not work without it. It does not work without it. Because I don't think, um, even though it has been in the mainstream for a very long time, I don't think by necessity comics needs to be a, um, a vow of poverty for people in it. I don't think doing the right thing needs to be that either. You know, And I think that's, uh, that's important. Look at that craziness of that. I always love when I get a chance to zoom in on the paintings because then I get to um, show you guys some of the details here so let's go to zoom all the way out so you guys can see how that stuff is coming together from a structural standpoint yeah i mean i'll never forget um and i always it, it comes like i watch it every now and again when i need some inspiration but i'll never forget when um ethan launched the first cyber frog book and i was there in the stream so was cecil so were so many people um but i was watching that stream and i remember when um in the first what like hour maybe i think it hit eight thousand dollars and i think that might have even been its funding goal but i'm not sure don't remember and um and just the excitement um of andrea and ethan and like because i mean god knows i mean we had had um we'd had jawbreakers come out and you know john malin first man over the wall you know had had done his thing but you really do till you're in that space and i remember being on michael bancroft's stream when uh we did the uh the launch um for um where i accidentally prematurely launched the campaign uh on michael's stream and just you don't know you don't know how this stuff is gonna go man it's crazy man it's wild yeah it be popping it sure does man it sure does it's fun stuff man yeah and there we go everybody's saying hello hello to each other that's what we do here i love it but yeah man that's the cool that's the cool stuff man I mean, I've always been, I've been doing this stuff for my whole life, like making artwork and telling stories. And comics is, comics isn't something I just woke up and decided to do. It's something that, um, you know, it, it sort of always feels like um, it was difficult for anything to really line up and difficult for, I just kept working on the skills. I've done concept art. I've done all the illustration work. Obviously I had an 18 year career in academia had a similar experience in some ways that Jordan Peterson had with it um, and just kind of watching all of that. And um, yeah, it's uh, to be, it sort of feels a little bit like a homecoming to do this kind of stuff, to be back doing comics. And again, if you have the book um, and you have not read my wife's incredible introduction, um, yeah, give it a read. Um, I, I, I was really blown away by that. Like, I remember she, she's like, okay, I have I wrote it. Do you want to read it? And, you know, being me, I was kind of like, eh, I don't know. Because, I mean, it's it's intense, man. I'm not one of those people who's, uh, I'm not one of those people who has an easy time with my feelings. You know what I'm saying? So it was crazy. I got a fever. And the only cure is Mornosfero. I love it. And that's coming from Gen X Catholic, who a lot of you guys might know his real name is Bruce Dickinson. And I want you to know something. He puts his pants on one leg at a time. Except for after he's done, he makes gold records. So know that. <laughs> That's right. Um, moving to another state to Cranberry Landers is the question. Yes, sir. Arizona, I'm thinking. Very cool, Cranberry. The land of Razor Fist, man. That's right. 
That's right. <laughs> Facts, says Gen X Catholic. You know it, man. You absolutely know it, brother. Yeah, man. So, yeah, that's... um. Let me see if I can move this without making too much of a racket here. There we go. Yeah, that's been the um, that's been the fun of this, kids. That's been the fun of doing this stuff. So yeah, I mean this book, um, I've already got the layout for the first page, which is the that was the most difficult part of contemplating book two. I was nervous about the cover because the cover is what you're going to use as the eventual image for selling the entire project which is the same with no Sparrow One's cover. But then I also was like, the first page is critical. The first and last page of a book, um, for particularly because my stories are self-contained. So when you get no Sparrow, um, you get a complete story. So you get a complete story so that it makes, you know, because it's painted comics, it's going to take a while, um, so that you, you're getting another adventure. You're not so much getting, you know, just a, a like, you know, I don't know where this is going, which was a necessity for the way that I work. And um, so I was nervous about that because I'm kind of starting again from, you know, that very beginning, you know. Oh, maybe heading to Arizona myself. My gosh, look at this, man. It's going to be like a, a comic skate. Yes. Yes. The Bruce Dickinson. <laughs> Cranberry Landers, you know, man. <laughs> yes, indeed, man. Gotta love it. Stephen Rockwood drawing. Hello, Cranberry Landers. Um, let's see. Yep. Maybe heading there myself. Uh, what does that mean? Never question Bruce Dickinson. That's right. You'll be made. What did he say? You'll be wearing gold plated diapers or something like that. My God, that was hilarious. Holy cow. Yeah. Christopher Walken, man. Christopher Walken is a character without a doubt. He's a character. And I mean, he's, he just does everything so well. He does comedy, dramatic stuff. You know, he kind of, he's, and again, that's, that's the cool thing about the arts. You know, it's like, um, when it's done right, if you dedicate yourself to your craft, you know, you can find all these different avenues you never would have thought of. You know, the possibilities expand, I think, the more you dedicate yourself to your craft and the more that you focus on it, man. It's um it's definitely I mean, if I had if I hadn't learned how to paint, which I never thought that painting would be anything I did as the focus for my work, uh, I wouldn't be here now and I certainly wouldn't have had the opportunity to show it to guys and you know, folks if I didn't Follow the mail in method and, and just say, yeah, get on YouTube. Just start streaming. That's rough. I mean, that's like, I, I still cannot believe that. When I saw that anniversary five years on YouTube, the thing that got me is, for some reason, I find it easier to believe that I have been in, um, been in CG for six years than I do to think I've been on YouTube because I came into this space and I was like, all right. I've got an Instagram following. Like, I didn't know anything about YouTube. I certainly didn't know anything about Twitter. That was even later than that. So to see, um, yeah, to see that, to see five years on YouTube was wild. And I mean, I didn't know anybody. You know, I didn't know, I mean, anybody in this space at all. Like, I've had friends and people I've met on YouTube, but I was just, I was thinking to myself when I did it, I go, wow, like, I, I had the faith to go, well, I didn't know I didn't know I had some big audience. I built it on Instagram to buy those art books. So I'm just going to have to have faith that that's going to happen here. <laughs> oh my God. It's scary when I look at it in hindsight, you know? Oh my God. He said the skit has ruined his life. He'll be at the restaurant and the waiter will come by and say, should you like anything else with that? Maybe more cowbell. <laughs> I don't doubt it. Um, it'll be either Arizona or Vegas. There you go. Yep, it's a learning process like anything. Amen. Yeah, it is. And and I think, you know, that was the, the thing. I don't know if any of you guys um, who follow me on Twitter, but I'm guessing a few of you might. Um, but I posted something. Uh, I posted something either last evening. I'm going to move my desk. I'm just realizing something. My arm isn't lined up right. Um, so my camera's in a weird spot. Um, but I posted a, a don't give up um, image with this one of the logos that's on my my t-shirt design you know it's like um give nihilism no quarter because i was just thinking about that and just the importance of that and staying focused and um and and not just staying focused but also just not giving into the fatigue of the grind and you know just trying to put positive stuff out there we all we all need it you know we all need to hear that sometimes 
And uh, it's been, like I said, it's been a very big theme. I've seen a lot of people, including myself, just kind of, you know, in need of a lift, man. Just in need of a lift. Because it's, uh, it's hard work for us to do this stuff. I know you guys know that because you're here. But, you know, it's, it's very much... Um, it's very much a, a very labor intensive experience and it's a very, um, you know, the amount of thinking you have to do from doing a thumbnail before you fire up a stream and for trying to figure out what your, your channel is going to be and what it's going to be. I mean, that's wild to think about. And I think that, um, when people look back on what we're doing here, it's, it's going to be something that, um, is even more impressive in hindsight. I don't think we know how much we're kind of inventing a uh, process for um, promoting and putting comics out there. And there's a lot of folks like Ethan and John um, who are, you know, just going to, uh, you know, and, and, you know, and your boy Zach, of course, too, but are going to uh, be seen as in a very important light because of that. And somebody I was watching um, just live stream before I fired up this live stream, was um was tom mcdonald who some of you guys might know he's a musician um and uh primarily in rap but he does other stuff as well and he's been he's been crushing it for a very long time and and his um for like six years now but his latest song is eight minutes long and it's it's, it's just it's freaking great <laughs> it's called god mode and i loved it yeah plenty of vitamin d here in the sunshine state says Mark's Music Obsession, The Cranberry Langers. Creative Faye, how are you doing? Triumph, Never Surrender. Such a good song. Yep, 100%. Um, it's good for building up a career. Yep. Uh, it'll be good to help with keeping a positive mindset. All that sun. Yeah, sun is definitely good for that. Sun is definitely good for that. We got Simply Green in the house. It's great to see you, Simply Green. Yeah, our opponents will not be uh, viewed kindly by history. I agree. And I think, you know, that I guess that was a, the thing that I've been been, you know, on about in my head lately which is um totally true i i have no doubt about that um i think it's really in the moment that is really tough it's exhausting to be at this for any period of time and mine like i said mine was my story was not broadcast on youtube and um as most stories aren't and it wasn't, um, but it's, it's for all of us. And I think it's probably true. Everybody could say this, you know, who's in, in comic skate on one level or another, or a lot of people could, that they've been dealing with and doing this kind of thing for a very long time. This just kind of brought it to a head. I found that most people who, um, you know, stand up to bullies and, you know, take risks to do the right thing. I think they probably were doing it their whole lives and they probably have faced a lot of tougher stuff it doesn't mean that we don't get tired we don't get frustrated um and that people you know it's it's not something that is it's not magic it's actually really tough it's really hard work and um and to do this kind of stuff that's the funniest thing right the, the, you guys are watching this it's like uh look at what we're accomplishing look at what we're doing here you know yeah agreed yep that's definitely, yeah, that's been something that's, again, that's been something that's been really, really on my mind. And just in terms of the, um, how do I word it? Yeah, it's been on my mind for a lot of different reasons. It's been on my mind chiefly for um, a realization I made about um, that... I hope that if it does anything, it shines a light on the folks that um, keep fighting and have been fighting for a very long time. That yes, it is exhausting. Yes, it does take a toll. And um, it's, it's, uh, it's something that should be celebrated. It doesn't mean that it has to be because should is should. But... Um, it's like I tend to notice people fighting the good fight and standing up for things. And um, and, it, and I guess it kind of chastened me a little bit because I don't, I don't think I... Um, I've never really thought of myself as being... Um, like, I just do what I do. It's not easy. It's difficult to do. But I don't 
you know, I've, I've always kind of just stood up for certain things and certain people as a matter of course, and I've tried to conduct myself with integrity as a matter of course. But um, it was it was shocking to realize um, how people who are comfortable with the implementation of, of certain ideas, how quickly they're broken when those things are turned on them. And it just it highlighted to me a couple of things, which is um, this is not easy, man. This is not easy to do. And uh, I know it isn't easy. I've known that for a while, but um, it's most people just can't exist in isolation like that and uh and the fear of being isolated whereas when you come into cg um and you do this you are taking a risk to to do that kind of stuff and to come into this space but i think that um i don't know i think it, it's just so much better in the long run than to be in a space where you could be you know have everything removed in one minute it's craziness man and that's sort of what we saw but I mean, that's, that's, again, that's a big part of my story. That's what academia was for me. It was that realization that I didn't wait around um, to see the full cycle of it. I started seeing it happening and I went, um, I got to make some, these are not, these people, have, there's been a radical change in what's going on. And uh, I could see, I could see the writing on the wall and, and I didn't need it to happen to, um, I didn't need it to happen to me for me to realize it wasn't a good thing. And that's when you take those risks of security for doing what's right. And so I guess that's kind of what this is. I mean, in a lot of ways for me this year with no Sparrow shipping and wrapping that stuff up, it's like that anniversary of that kind of thing. You know, it feels like a milestone in my life for a million reasons. This year is a milestone in my life. It's craziness. Let me see here. Um, Mark's music obsession. I like Florida. I have family there. Very cool. Yeah, I may have family there soon. Well, it's good to try and make the world a little better place. I agree 100%. Uh, yep, Florida, one day the wave will break. Yep, you're right. It's a shame for sure uh, the current state of California hopefully will turn around someday. I think it will. Yeah, I mean, I if there's if there's one thing that I want, always want my work to be about, it's it's having faith in that because um, it's not, it's tough to be, and it was so, I mean, gosh, you guys know how it is when you have somebody you're close to. I had a very good brotherly conversation uh, with my brother Nick today. And I said, you know, man, I said, I got to tell you, man, I, I get so tired some days. Cause he was telling me about more of the, you know, the stuff that goes on um, behind the scenes and the, you know, realization of the obvious that's starting to happen in academia, whether they do something about it or not. And I said, dude, you know, what's crazy is, and, and I don't, I don't know what came over me, man. It was, it's been a weird 24 hours. But I said, you know what it is, man? I go, I don't think that I've ever said to him, I was saying at this point, I don't think I've ever told you, man, how freaking exhausting and difficult it is to keep your head focused and on a swivel and just making work. You're getting so much from the outside and you're also having to kind of pull from inside of yourself inspiration so guys like i mean every now and again it's funny my wife will look at something and she'll go and she's he, she's just she's awesome she's just an awesome teammate to have and she'll go oh well we just got some money in from a commission and that is so important that helps oh my gosh like we just got a youtube check well that's gonna help i mean these things go to um these things go to like you know life being able to live being able to do what you do and it's the thing with um it's not that we're just not doing a thing when we're here. We're actively trying to push back um, on the culture with our own art. And it's expensive to make these books. It's expensive to make art. This is so difficult um, to really make things that are beautiful, to change the conversation, to show what can be done. So I take what I do here incredibly seriously. I mean, it's just, it's really... Yeah, it's something. Absolutely craziness. There we go. I love, see, I love the texture. I love doing stuff like that for you guys, man. I love the texture, man. Yes, indeed. Yeah, but you know what's so crazy is, you know, you guys are here and we have this time together. We have this time to make, you know, uh, make the best we can out of a Sunday and talk about the stuff that we're passionate about. And so let me do that. Let me do that. Let me talk about something while I paint. I love, love 
the Mirage Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles comics. I love those early comic books. I, for as sophisticated as I can paint, the joy I feel when I look at those comics is incredible. It's like, it takes me right back to my first and most pure comic experience. The funny part is, I got the first trade paperback, and I mean first publishing trade paperback, of those early issues and with a painted cover that was the same format as No Sparrow. It's about 8.5 by 11. And if you had told me I would be doing painted comics, I would have never believed you. But I was looking at it, and I have an issue, a reprint of issue one, uh, that's got this weird sort of mosaic cover on it. And I the reason I love it so much is because it's showing it in black and white as raw as it was when it came out with these crazy drawings. And I just go, yeah, we're writing we're writing stories in our goal. In 40 pages, they created that pop, pop culture phenomenon. In 40 pages. That's what we're doing. Every time I do a book, when I did No Sparrow, I'm like, I'm going to create a world in a world. I'm going to create a world for the audience that they can feel like they're a part of, that they're jumping in from the start and that they know what these characters are. I'm creating a new icon against a Lovecraftian fantasy horror landscape. And that's exactly the kind of, you know, swinging for the fences that independent creators should be doing. Every book, it's like there's an opportunity to go for broke. And that's what I'm doing, man. I'm just kind of going, let's do it. Let's make it happen. It'll test your metal. It'll push you to the limit. But there's a chance that with God's good grace and you guys uh, helping me and supporting us, that um, we'll be able to make a real difference. We'll be able to make a real difference and have creators. Isn't that a great cover? Um, and uh, be able to have creators who are standing up for stuff and really mean it. You know, who have principles that are consistent when nobody's looking. And that's the something that I think that um, the art reflects and the way we kind of been conducting ourselves is reflected in that, or reflects that as well. So yeah, oh man, I love, I'm starting to really enjoy, let me see if I can hold it at an angle where you guys can see it, but I'm starting to really enjoy how that is coming together. I feel like the colors are a little off. Let me see if I can saturate or adjust the gamma a little bit on that. Hang on guys, it doesn't look how it should. Not that, a little bit more saturation. That's a little bit more accurate. There we go. Let's deepen that a little bit. There we are. I think it's a little closer. Let's see here. Um, how does Mrs. and Jetty feel about the CG stuff and the independent comic space? Oh my God, where do I begin? Um, she's 100% supportive of it. God only knows why, um, but she is. You know, How does she feel about being married to an artist, being married to somebody who... Um, yeah, who stands on principle when it has consequences for me, but it has consequences for her and our family. That's an incredible woman right there, man. That's an incredible woman. And um, yeah, I can't, I mean, reading her intro is is the best way I could put it. But yeah, she said, hi, Comics Gate. Uh, she's watched the streams, um, the early streams with everybody. And she knows, like, she feels like it's a weird thing. You know, she feels like she knows folks. She said to me one time when I was watching Todd McFarlane, she's been with me this long. She goes, I feel like I know Todd McFarlane. Like, I feel like he's somebody I know. You've shown me his stuff so much. And that's how she feels about CG. She's, um, I don't think anybody could ask for a more supportive spouse in the CG space. You know, I just hope that, um, that with the work I'm doing and everything like that, um, yeah, I know she wouldn't say this, but I'll say it. I just, uh, yeah, I, I, I hope that she gets to see and enjoy um, the success for having the principles that she has and standing by somebody with the principles uh, because it really is, it's an amazing thing. When I do my work, it's it's always been motivated, whether it's teaching or this, by putting positive stuff out there into the world and doing things for other people. And having children, being a father, and being a husband, um, any success that I ever think about uh, for my work is to improve their quality of life. That's, that's for me, that's everything. And she's, yeah, I, I, God, I could talk about that woman. I don't have enough time to talk about her. You know, I mean, yeah, 
she's i mean she's like the grace of god manifest on earth that's what i got for you there hoy vey uh let me see here um <laughs> no i don't think um i don't think that's her style but she might as well be with me she might as well be yeah yeah all in uh the wife's court where the move that's best for both our businesses yeah absolutely yeah it happens 100 percent, man yeah it's it's a wild thing you know it's like she's she um yeah she's she gets she gets this comic book thing when i was doing spring ball back in the day she was at those conventions when i did the flash gordon story that Len Wein wrote. We were at New York Comic Con. This was in 2009. And she went down there with me um, so that I could go there and sign uh, the 75th anniversary Flash Gordon book. She's, um, yeah, she's just, she's just amazing. She's rock solid. And I have her back too. You know, I have her back completely and she knows that. Um, but it's, um, I feel very, very fortunate that she understands this stuff. And now I think she's also, um, I think it was hard to understand this stuff when it was first happening for a lot of people, but I think she's had a little bit of a, um, she had a little bit of a heads up when this stuff started spreading out to where she was like, okay, I know this, like, I know what's going on here. This is actually that crazy stuff that was going on in comics, but yeah, she, she knows Ethan. She knows like not personally, but she's like, yeah, she's, she's a comics gay wife. I mean, she's been here, man. Yeah, that's a load on a husband's shoulder. That's wonderful, wonderful support. Yeah, she's amazing. Um, yeah, you know what? I was thinking about that too. You know what's funny is um, I'll do, yeah, I'll do whatever, I'll do whatever, you know, helps, man, in terms of um, <laughs> us grow whatever this thing is, you know? And, you know, that's that's actually a reason why I do this. It's like, because uh, I think it's, there. how many times have you been watching YouTube or seeing something on YouTube and you go, um, you would have never thought to have tried to like, you know, do something or build something or fix something or do whatever. And you see it on YouTube and you go, I think I'm going to give that a try. I do think in some, you know, small way, that's an element of this. Like I, I don't even care if it's watercolor or gouache, but I hope people see this and go, man, you know what? I don't know if I'll ever do anything with it, but I really want to make some artwork. You know, I really want to make some art. And I mean, that's, that's ultimately what it's about. It's finding kindred spirits and, and putting the positivity out there of this kind of stuff. But yeah, so let me see if I can make that happen real quick. There we are. Oh my goodness, that's crazy. So yeah, so I mean, for me, Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles was a huge influence, a comic book called Grips. And then fiction. I've been looking at, um, I've been looking at a lot of really interesting fiction, old silent films lately. Anything that just gets those creative juices in there, man, that's what it's about. And I forgot to say, shout out to channel member, ferris comics it is great to have you in here man it's great to have you in here um and thank you for being a channel member man every bit helps every bit helps but yeah man that is the cool stuff that we do freaking heck man yeah it's a cool crew i mean it takes me back to what i love about the comic book industry you know what i liked about you know just i mean comic book i should say um comic book shops being a comic book fan doing this kind of stuff you know we're just a 24 hour a day comic convention sometimes okay that's coming together oh and actually speaking of um i know i posted this on twitter but there's repeating i just got in the mail the other day cecil's cash grab which was so cool to see um and then somewhere else i even open this thing where the heck did I put it? I thought I opened it. Darn. I have to track that down. But I got another Comicscape book as well, which was uh, Judix. I try not to dox myself. Let me see what I got here. Hang on a second, guys. Would shorts on mainline comics or movies help draw more people to your channel? Yeah, I think there's a lot of stuff. There's a lot of stuff that, um, that will help. And that's all stuff that, you know, guys... Um, I have been, oh no, this is taped up really well. Um, and the only reason I say that is because um, sometimes when things are taped up really well, you can't tell where you're supposed to open them. But um, I think all of that stuff is helpful. But I think the biggest thing is, and something I've really committed myself to, um, is is consistency. Like I, one of my, my YouTube heroes is um, are uh, the Townsends. And the Townsends are just incredible folks. 
And the thing about them that I love, and they give really good advice on this kind of stuff, is they're like going, you'll find, you'll find your your particular thing, because for me it's about, um, yeah, man, it's crazy. But that's that's a good idea, Cranberry Landers. That's a really good idea. Um, but I think also shorts, doing pre-recorded stuff is important. You know, I mean, there's 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 big big things that I want to be um, that I want to be doing and working on. Okay, this is really taped up well, and I say this for somebody who tapes their stuff up really well. My goodness. Just trying not to cut any comics here. Ah, oh, there we go. Okay, that looks promising. Hang on a second. Ugh. <laughs> so close. So close. Man, I was up till 6 in the morning last night, man. I just could not sleep. I was just, my brain was racing. Okay, so let me make sure I get everything out of here. Hang on, hang on. Okay, I think I did. All right. Let's see what we got here. Okay. So this is what I just got. So this is Judix, based on an old silent film and pulp character so you know i had to check it out and so this is the artwork right here eric weathers of course on letters my man neff <laughs> look at all these fine folks freaking heck man odin oh my gosh man i love seeing this and uh and here are some of the extras that you get in there look at that you get a coin you get stickers you get some trading cards very very cool guys this is what it's about man this is what it's about um would be more work less time to do um other work yeah, oh shoot let me i think i missed something would shorts the mainstream channel yeah you know what's such interesting it does look good cranberry langers yeah i thought it looked good from the previews here's here's the wild thing about it whatever we do in any kind of space is going to take work like i when i was teaching I, it was just i mean i worked so hard i worked so many crazy long hours when i was doing that stuff and um so it's all i mean work has never really been the thing i think the thing is finding the groove because if you're in if you know what kind of content you want to make like not everybody's content um or not everybody's going to be good at making a particular type of content and like this this is what you guys are looking at right now this is weird to people and it's the only thing i know how to do in terms of our primary thing i know how to do so i the amount of times some i've been on a stream and somebody goes yeah, this guy can paint and talk. And I swear I thought that that was not a rare skill until you guys told me that it was rare. And so I'm kind of always going, eh, let's just lean into it. You know, people show up. I am so grateful. Thank you guys for being here. Thank you for hitting the like. 20 people watching, 20 likes. You guys are on point today. Um, but I tell you what, man, I just, I, I make an effort. Guys, so funny. I came onto this stream. And I was just feeling a little tired, a little down, and kind of just exhausted. But I committed to streaming. Consistency is important. And within, you know, however long we've been streaming, an hour, I'm already feeling great. I'm already feeling great being with you guys, man. Because this is the dream. The dream has been comics. And if I can, not even the dream has been comics, man. It's so much bigger than that, man. Working on this book has been so powerful for my artistic spirit, for my faith, finding other folks who are passionate about all of this stuff. I mean, my goodness. I can't uh, I can't count the ways in which this is um, this experience has been wild and and amazing and rewarding. So yeah, I mean that's what I love about being here. You know, sometimes I'll say, ah, you know, I don't know. I'm like, uh, can I paint on stream today? Can I make this happen? And then I get in here and you guys totally lift me up, man. Oh, jeez. No, 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 no. <laughs> Batman. It's great to see you. I haven't seen you in ages, my friend. It is terrific to see you. That's because you rock. Thank you so much. That's very kind. Thank you, David Springer. Much love, guys. Ah, uh, you guys are the best. You guys are the best, man. Oh, heavens. Oh, heavens. I mean, oh, my Lord. I, I... I'm so glad that uh, I'm at this point I'm at right now because, boy, was it nerve-wracking. Every now and again, I'll go back and watch some of those early streams of, of just not knowing what I'm doing and being utterly nervous and terrified. 
and uh it's wild now it's it's something that i just really um it's like going and, and hanging out with your uh your buddies and doing painting it's fun to be able to share this stuff with you guys you know look at how we just start to pull that stuff out of the background man it's so funny i love seeing it man Look at all the love in the chat. Everybody's just being so uh, enthusiastic on this fine Sunday. I hope everybody's having a wonderful Sunday, my friend. Wonderful Sunday. Um, let me see here. Working hard and enjoying life. Been crazy first time. I have caught you in a long time. Oh, well, I'm so glad you're catching me now, my friend. Yeah, it's. Um, I figure that's what it is. When I when people are off doing stuff, I my tendency is to always imagine that they are working their tails off and they got a lot of stuff going on. And when we see each other, It'll be great. And it usually is the case, my friend. So thank you for being here. And it's great to see you, man. And I hope work is going well. I hope work is going really well. What's up, Eric Huffles? Oh, man, we got so many amazing creative people in the house. It is great to see you, Eric. Channel member, Rockstar. You guys, you channel members keep me <laughs> keep me uh, just so inspired and so motivated, man. Every time I go and I update the channel member credits, it's like I get to see all of you guys who are new supporters, but especially you guys who have been supporters for a long time. And it puts a smile on my face, man. You guys are my ride or die. Thank you so much, man. I appreciate it very much, more than you guys can know. Um, oh, yeah, this is starting to come together, guys. I think this is going to be fun. This is going to be fun. Apex Comics, what's up? How are you doing, my friend? It's great to see you. Gosh, man, it's like uh, the Sunday crew is in effect. Sunday crew is in effect. Let's see here. There we go. All right. You know what's amazing to me about YouTube and streaming and all this stuff is... Um, especially using Ecamm, what I'm using here. Scottsley, speaking of the old guard, it's great to see you, brother. How you been, man? Oh, man, I, you guys are, it's great. <laughs> Thank you guys for being here. Um, but one of the things that's, that's amazing to me about this is um, how well the colors come across when I'm doing this. I mean, I look at Bob Ross, and that was like television resolution and what it was back then, not 4K, not HD, not 1080p, not any of that stuff. And it's it's amazing to watch, but sometimes I think, wow, what would that have looked like if we'd had today's technology to capture some of that stuff? Because when I do these painting streams, I mean, you guys are getting... Like, when I did uh, demos when I was teaching, or I do demonstrations of how I painted, no student had as good of a view as you guys have here in the chat. Do you know what I mean? Oh, I'm still fulfilling Nosfero. Um, So we're on... I think the missus told me um, we've got like 200 and something or maybe I don't know because it's a little complicated in terms of um, some stuff gets put together. But I think that um, we are on we're in. The, I think we're going to be in the 400s by the end of this week. So, yeah, we've been fulfilling. We've got oh, my God, like we, we just made another trip to the post office. But, yeah, I'm one man operation and I've been. Um, We've been at the grind. That's what I did yesterday. So yeah. So depending on what number you are, um, if you're in the 600s, um, I have not gotten to you yet. And uh, it also depends where you are in the world. So Canada and the like, you the U.S. is around 377 just got mailed off. But again, uh, there's people who backed it multiple times. And so if we catch that, there's going to be higher numbers in there. And then Canada's at 400. And those are the places where we have the most um, we have the most fulfilled. So depending on where you are and what number you are, um, yours will be coming soon because it doesn't stop. I was uh, packing up books before I started streaming, and I will be packing up more books after I stream today. So yeah, hopefully soon. Oh, you bought two beautiful. What number are you? I'm just curious. you don't have to tell me. <laughs> don't have to give me your real name and your address. Yeah, I just got my notification um, notification, and I'm in Canada. Excellent. So you must have been in the first 400 in Canada nice you live in texas hey that's where i was born did you know that um i'm born in uh, i was born in houston texas and my wife was born in dallas so yeah much love to texas yeah I'm, a lot of our family is in texas um but yeah so um what's the i'm trying to I feel like i would know i just mailed off um again up to 377 but a bunch of people i'm starting to get to a lot of the folks uh that i know so you should be soon 
If you live in the States, um, you we should be coming up on it. Yeah, I think there are about six or 700 shipments left. Yeah, it feels like that. I swear it feels like that. Um, but we're at, um, I think we've got just, it's tough to get a number because I've mailed out, like, um, I'll mail out, so in the first 377, I'll get 377, or somebody will order, be order 350, and then they'll also be order 525, and so we put those things together. So I think it's, you know, knock on wood and Lord, uh, God, please. I think it's going to get faster as I get to the end because there's going to be bigger gaps between the books, but I'm already seeing that because I'm fulfilling stuff from before. So, oh, okay. I, you're 382. Yeah. And Canada is up to 400. So yeah, if you were in that first 400, then, um, I think there are like, yeah, there are like 700 orders. I think that's about what we've got approximately 700. I think it's like 690 or 600 and something. Um, God, <laughs> it's nuts. And I build the boxes and everything like that too, which is, I try to make sure those boxes are in great shape. Although I was hearing from, um, Anna and a lot of folks in Canada that a lot of the stuff is being opened or something like that from time to time or something that goes on that damages it. She said her calendar she sent out there got opened and were folded in half and put back in. Is that true? Canadians, can you, can you verify that? I don't know if that's true. I mean, I, I don't think she's lying, but I'm just saying I, I'm sure there's some specific thing to it because a lot of folks from Canada were saying it was frustrating. But yeah, man, I'm so excited, Scottsley, for you to be getting your books. That is so cool. Yeah, I'm going to campaign Fembat later this year and going to hire Critical Blast as my fulfillment service. Very cool. That's awesome. Yeah, I definitely think fulfillment services can be a really useful thing. What I do and the reason why it's it's kind of the way the process has to shake out is because I sign my books and I um I sign them then, then there's all these specific add-ons that could involve a head sketch from me so it's one of those things that just makes it a little bit a little bit more um you know complicated for me to make sure I'm keeping track of it and I'm gonna who knows what I'm gonna do for the second campaign the second chance campaign because um I definitely am not looking to have it be as complicated as it's been. Jordan, how are you doing? Uh, let me see. Oh, my glasses just fell. I've had a lot of my mail. Oh no, opened and screwed with by other, co oh my gosh, by our uh, customs people. They all, oh man, that's a bummer. Oh, Eric Cuffles has, there's the link to Testament volume three. It is great to see. Um, a swordsman and his giant wolf seek to defeat and awaken evil. There you guys go. There's a link. Um, and let me just say this, Jordan, I think yours is in the mail. Did you get a notification? Because we put yours in the mail, I think. Oh, thank you so much. I appreciate that, man. I appreciate that. But yeah, I, I'm pretty sure I packaged yours and, and took that to the post office. So that should be uh, coming your way soon. But yeah, I've been hearing that from folks in Canada. And I just was thinking, man, that is... Because, you know, we pack these things so carefully. And uh, they're not meant to be opened and then shoddily resealed. That ain't cool, folks. I don't know why they're doing that. But I've been hearing that from a lot of people. And at first, I, I mean, I believed it. But I was like, why would they do that? You know, particularly if something is labeled fragile. You know, do you really want to be opening it up and then resealing it? It's kind of nuts. But you know how it goes. I remember sending stuff to India. And that was way back when I was a kid. We would send stuff to family that were over there. And that stuff was absolutely taken apart. There were all these rules that people would give you for like how not to package or label something. So that would happen. It was nuts. Oh, sweet. So you did get the notification. Awesome, Jordan. I cannot wait for you to get it, man. Yeah, Cranberry Langers. It is crazy. It is crazy. Gosh, look at how well the colors are coming up on stream, man. This is really wild to see. I, I guess I haven't worked on Nosferu in a while. Um, and no Sparrow is a very, um, yeah, it's, it's, someone was saying this, um, online, which I love that they could see not only the Frazetta influences, but also those early kind of watercolor Disney kind of films like Fantasia. And that's huge for me. That's, those are big influences, you know? Yeah. You especially do because it's more valuable. Yeah. 100%. Yeah. They are afraid of Americans sending any form of freedom over the borders to Scott's <coughs> Scottsley, you just killed me, dude. <coughs> oh my lord oh i love streaming with you guys yeah you know and and this is the other thing about all of this stuff man i i've been this has definitely been um this has definitely been a good time for 
for my faith and for all of the, the stuff I do. But, you know, I really do think that um, I have a lot of faith, man. I have a lot of faith in God and I have a lot of faith in, um, you know, I always think of uh, Jehovah Jireh whenever I'm, I'm just feeling low and feeling tired and it feels like it's so much for one person to do to, you know, just think, you know, there's those thoughts, those little thoughts that can creep into your mind where you think there's, you know, it's so much for one person to be painting, drawing, writing, promoting, you know, doing all of this stuff that we're all doing. And, um, and, you know, gosh, like it's so difficult and like, how are we going to do it? And you just, sometimes you just have to do that. You have to just kind of, you know, give it up there. And, and my wife got me, um, you know, my wife got me tickets to see Jordan Peterson and I got to listen to his wife talk about her diagnosis and her father's passing. And she gave a talk for a little bit and she talked about like her new understanding of what it meant to put things in God's hands and kind of, um, that it just kind of let go of the need to know and control the outcome and focus on the task at hand. And that has been huge for me, man. Yeah. Here's your freedom prize. Yeah, that's right. That's what we were sending. That's what we were sending. Absolutely. Yeah, I just come down south and grab uh, your freedom. That's right. That's what they're thinking. Yeah. I love French fries. I know that's not where anybody was going with that, but I do love French fries. They're wonderful. French fries are one of the truly great things in this world. Um, that and a burger. Oh, love hamburgers, man. Let me see here. All right. So now let's have some fun here. It's funny, you, I will slip into Bob Rossisms without even thinking about it because I've watched so much Bob Ross when I was a kid. It's almost important for me not to f say the phrase, all right, let's have some fun here. <laughs> Bob was uh, Bob was a legend, and he's still crushing it on YouTube. Never forget, Bob is still crushing it on YouTube from beyond the grave. He's teaching us all a lesson. There we go. Oh my goodness gracious. There we are. Yeah, I mean, oh my gosh, guys. Uh, so, and for all of you guys who are, are eagerly awaiting getting your copies of Nosfero, let me, let me reaffirm to you how grateful I am for your support. And even more so than that, um, when I look at that book, there's no doubt in my mind that, that the creating of Nosfero, the launching of that and the making of that book has changed my life in so many ways, just the process of doing it. Um, I've realized through being in Comicsgate, I've realized so much about what I'm capable of. I've realized a lot of stuff about my personal integrity and, and things that I, you know, just won't do and won't be a part of. Um, I've learned a lot about um, just the amazing people out there who believe in independence, believe in comics, having the support of people that I don't even know I've never met in person for this crazy thing called art that is so important. Art is, is so important to the human psyche and the human soul. And I, I'm overwhelmed all the time by that, man. I'm overwhelmed all the time by it and really grateful. Um, yeah, just don't go into William Alexander mode, Chant. I won't. I won't. I promise. <laughs> I promise. <laughs> yeah. Y'all don't know about the language police. I believe you 100%. Yeah, curly fries and waffle fries. Oh, yeah, man. Sweet potato fries are good, too. Um, I do want to move to the U.S., but I'm sort of stuck because of family um, and costs. Also, our government taxes um, us big if we try to move. I can imagine. Yeah, I've heard about that a lot of places, and I know California instituted that, too, as well. Um, yeah, closing tonight, guys. The fearsome preview book. That's right, with the art by David Brohawk Williams. And... Um, <clears throat> excuse me if you haven't seen that book guys uh the pages man the colors david's artwork um they're singing of course eric weathers is lettering but i mean is that ever in doubt i don't think that's ever in doubt man um it's uh it looks beautiful dude it looks really beautiful i don't i didn't even know um Ethan has been talking about that since really early on in Comicsgate, that he was looking for an artist to do it. I think Kanan White originally was going to be the person he was thinking about doing the book, but Kanan didn't want to do um, do Comicsgate, I guess, full-time or whatever, and uh, which is insane to me. 
Like, it's insane to me. Like, I don't understand turning down an opportunity like that. I really don't. With all due respect to him, I, that my brain, my brain cannot go there. I just can't understand that. Uh, but anyway, um, and so he's been talking about this book, but I don't, I didn't really get what it was until he started um, talking about the preview book and then seeing the pages coming in from David. It's, I think I finally have found, um, I finally get the book. You know, I think that they visualized it so well, man. David, because the cover, I thought it was really cool and really detailed, the cover that Kane and White did. But I don't think I could tell, like, what it was about from that. I think you need the interior pages for that. And the interior pages, man, it's like seeing those, the story comes together real fast. Really fast. You can see how, it, like, it all makes sense and how it all works. And I actually love the colorist they got. Does anybody know who's coloring that book? Is that, um, is that Kyle... Uh, Kyle um, Ritter or is that somebody else I forget um, I forget who's coloring it and is David inking it I gotta look I see I'm on ecam so it's a little bit more it's cumbersome like cumbersome I can't really share uh, screen as easily but let me just try um so I think I have it on here somewhere fearsome I don't even have that link in there um fearsome uh Ethan Fanskyver see if it comes up hold on a second here ah there we go fearsome preview book plus all caps comic store okay so um let me see colors by jason wright that's right that's right written by me ethan van skyver with art by david williams so david is david inking himself i think he's inking himself very cool i'm gonna assume wow yeah, oh, guys, those pages look so good. The colors, Jason Wright, if you're out there, um, from, a, from a painter, those are some stunning colors, my friend. Well done. Yeah, that's beautiful stuff. Yeah, Jason Wright in the chat. Yeah, Cranberry uh, Landers has got it, yeah. Um, yeah, I think that that is some stunning, stunning color work. Beautiful color theory. Beautiful color theory. Um, just really readable, but also... Um, it's got the right amount of uh, sort of hard and soft edges that make for an appealing visual because comic book coloring is really tricky to do because doing things like color holds, or I should say losing ink lines and losing edges, just to put it in its most basic sort of term, is something very difficult to do um, over pen and ink stuff because you could compromise the integrity of the line weight very easily. So uh, Jason Wright is doing fantastic work on that. It looks beautiful. I think it's the some of the best. Um, I think some of the best coloring I've seen on David Williams's stuff. Now I'm not, I'm not wildly up on um, David Williams's, uh, you know, um, comic uh, history and the stuff he's done, but um, it's got a really great. Uh, I you know what I take that back because I saw his stuff on Bass Reeves, so I, I really do feel like that's um, there's something going on. It might be the story, it might be the subject matter, but there's something really great happening here. You know, it could be Ethan's art direction too, but seriously, David, that's killer stuff. What's up, Grey Wolf channel member, and thank you for your support. I was just talking about that. Yeah, don't those pages look great? Yeah, man. It's, um, David's drawing some, like, it's this really nice blend of, um, representational and cartoony on those faces. You know? It's, um, yeah, it's weird, man. It's, um, I don't want to say it's like, uh, yeah, see, whenever you talk about artist work, <laughs> it's like, you know, you never know, you never know what, uh, what people are, you know, what they're going to make of it. Like you can say, oh, it reminds me of this. And they hate that stuff. You never know. But, um, it kind of reminds me of something I like, I will say about the, um, the Batman animated series, but it works better for comics. Do you know what I mean? It works better for comics, especially with the way the lines are breaking and the coloring. Because one thing animation, it's something I think about, <clears throat> excuse me, in terms of simplistic coloring. And obviously I paint, which is the opposite of that. But even when I'm doing spring ball, which is digital, and I've been working on that, um, that we aren't animation in the sense of uh, television animation. So we have the chance to do things with comic book coloring that are just a little bit more expressive, a little bit more painterly. And I think that's what Lynn uh, Varley brought to the game on uh, The Dark Knight with Frank Miller. I remember noticing that, uh, that work a lot. 
And I think that's the thing that's so important is the right, it's like putting together a team, the right colorist with the right, um, you know, story notes, the right artist. I'm sorry, the right colorist with the right, <clears throat> excuse me, penciler and inker. Um, and then the right um, story for the right artist. A lot of it's about casting. And when you do your own stuff, like, you know, where you're doing everything, it's uh, it's a different process. It's a, It's difficult for completely different reasons. Because there's no one to fall back on. Thank God I had Eric doing the lettering. Like I have to be able to work that balance out. But um, but then again, I think putting together a team might have its own difficulties with it. I mean, I'm sure I'm certain it does. I'm certain it does. You know, just getting that right mixture and and um, yeah, it's weird, man. We're all doing different stuff. Like I think of Kevin Eastman and Peter Laird, man. Uh, Nosferis design looks like it's um, it simplify well though. Yes, I know. Oh, believe me, guys. Yeah, thank you for that. I, so I, I love um, I love character design a lot. I actually taught character design, lectured about my character design uh, theories at you know MIT and Wellesley and Microsoft Games flew me up to talk about that stuff up in Seattle. Um, they, the, it's craziness. Hasbro, Mattel, in addition to the concept art stuff I've done, taught a lot of big concept artists you guys know. And for me... Um, keeping that simplicity there is, uh, and that readability there is a huge part of what we do. Huge part of what we do. And that's why, again, um, when you see painted comic books, one of the things that's tough is people who paint don't tend to, um, be character designers. So it's, you see them usually working on either other stuff or more ethereal, um, kind of more independent vertigo like stories. So I wanted to do pulp stories because, and, and the difficulty with that is I have to create my own characters in my own world. But, I mean, I think, shoot, man, you guys get it. You guys get it, and uh, I am so grateful. It's really cool, man. It's really cool stuff to do. And, uh, yeah, I, I always picture Nosfero. Um, I want to be able to recognize Nosfero and people to recognize him at range, you know, and, and have he has his own kind of his look, but he's not too complicated. And then the real issue for me when painting him is, is just getting the texture in there. You know, getting enough texture because people like to, you know, put their nose to the paintings and that kind of thing. Uh, and, uh, you know, that's what it's about. Yeah, I did character design stuff for DreamWorks Consumer Products for uh, How to Train Your Dragon and uh, Monsters vs. Aliens back in the day. So, yeah, I've done, I've done a ton, a ton of work. You know, I've been an industry professional now. Gosh, you know, for decades. So, I mean, it's, it's wild, you know, I mean, I've been that, doing that longer since I've been a dad and that's my favorite job, uh, being a dad. So let me see here. Okay. That works. That works. So funny, man. You guys are getting a glimpse into my non-internal monologue. <laughs> oh my Lord. It's too funny. Oh my gosh. Let's see what we got here. Um, I've seen some great intricate designs, but basically unusable outside of the format. Yeah, absolutely. Right. Yeah, I mean, it's funny, too, because, you know, you're right, Cranberry Langers. Um, oh, yeah, those are great designs. Yeah, I got to see a lot of Nico Marley concept art, um, the guy who was the lead concept artist. Uh, and my friend, who was also art directing me, art directed uh, Nico Marley. So, um, yeah, when I did the How to Train Your Dragon stuff, that was that was really fun. Because I had to figure out Nico Marley's style, because they were consumer products, wanted to keep it, um, keep it in line with it. But, you know, guys... My first job, one of my first jobs out of college was doing uh, card design for and hand-painted card design for the Harry Potter trading card game. Um, I've been in a bunch of UK publications on comics. Um, I've done work on uh, Flash Gordon, Starship Troopers. Um, gosh, did a little bit on, <laughs> on that before my appendix ruptured. God, that was a nightmare. Um, and... Um, just all kinds of stuff, not to mention the stuff I've done and, you know, been doing in CG, but worked on concept design for, um, a VR video game. Uh, let's see what else I've done. Art directed a Mattel, uh, proof of concept project done concept design for, um, a thing they did. They were trying to pitch, uh, Hasbro hired me to do concept art for, um, a TV series way back when I was first out of school for, um, the, the video game centipede. They're always, were trying to get their, their television and Hasbro entertainment section um, stronger and, and trying to get those properties 
to turn into something. So yeah, I've done a ton of work in concept art and illustration, man. Tons. Yeah, it, it takes me back, man. Not to mention self-publishing comics and, you know, it's just been nonstop work. Not to mention a 18-year college career, man. I basically, you know, got hired at, at, God, I think I was, what, 26 when I got hired to teach at, at Rhode Island School of Design. You know, one of the most prestigious art schools in the country, man. And it was, it was wild. And it was cool, too, because I learned a lot about, you know, talking about art, but also toughness, man. Um, yeah, I didn't like the plot of Monsters vs. Aliens. I wasn't wild about it, but I thought the character designs were cool. Yeah, there was some really cool stuff. And you know what's so funny about that stuff? Look at this. I like the cockroach, yeah, from Monsters vs. Aliens. Yes, indeed. Sorry, creative fan. I didn't click on that, right? Um, filed my taxes. Accomplishment of the day. That's a big accomplishment, Mr. Monkey Boy 1969. Congratulations, man. Yeah, um, it's... um. It was crazy, right? So I started teaching there, and one of the things I learned, and that's still a big part of me, is um, is when I came in there to substitute teach once, that was one of my first experiences, I was substitute teaching, uh, some tall kid, after I was introducing myself and showing my work because I was substituting for a teacher, um, said to me, raises his hand, right? Because I was young. I must have been at this point. I was like, what, 24? Four or five maybe um said to me um uh yeah i have a question and i was like uh yeah sure man what is it and he goes um are you qualified to be teaching us <laughs> i mean it was hilarious man every now and again i meet people who have no idea what i've been through and what i come from and they will step to me in, in a weird way like i'm not i don't go around trying to be some i'm not like for god's sake guys like that's not my that's not my life. I've had things happen to me and I've had to learn how to deal with things a certain way. And this guy says this to me and he's like taller than me. And you know, it's like all these things, but that's nothing new. I mean, I grew up in Tennessee. Everybody in the South is like nine feet tall. You know, it's crazy. You have to be six foot three for someone to notice you. And, um, as being average, maybe height. And, um, and he said, are you qualified to be teaching us? And I looked at him and I paused for a minute and uh, I went, I don't know dead silence in the room they're like like what's gonna happen like with this guy like and he's like and i said I, I honestly don't know i said um is that your work over there on the wall and he goes yeah i said well i'm qualified to teach you freaking done i had no trouble for the remainder of the class and uh and he was like all pot he's like he tried to like you know recover which is always cute to see he was like, uh, he's like, hey man, yeah, you know, and I, I, you know, I don't even know if art's gonna be my thing, and I'm gonna go work for the Salvation Army maybe, and I'll do this and that and the other thing. I'm like, oh, that's all cool, dude. That's all cool. We just had a miscommunication, and now we understand each other. I mean, man, it's weird. Yeah, I mean, when you have like, and it's again, whatever. But it sometimes I think. And, and I, I, and I, this is not a unique experience, but I do remember the early nineties, you know, when I was, um, when, uh, during Gulf war one, I was in class in Chattanooga, all boys school, you know, it was pretty, you know, it was a pretty tough sort of, you know, <laughs> pretty tough experience. And, um, I think a teacher announced, uh, to the class, like we've just, uh, gone to war with Iraq um, I wonder what side and jetty's on and pointed me out. I'm just sitting there. Like I didn't even under, like half the time I didn't even understand that sort of stuff. So, I mean, can you imagine that? I'm like, I'm born in Texas. I'm, you know, I'm Indian, Austrian, Puerto Rican. Like what the hell, man? Yeah. There are, that's where my family's from, man. A, a family of giants, a family of giants, man. Yeah, I know. Then people talk to me about CG and I'm like, y'all don't have any idea what you're talking about. And that's not even close. That's like a three for me. I mean, I was in, I must've been in eighth grade. Cause I remember the classroom. I, who was the, I don't want to say the teacher, but anyway, um, I remember the classroom and I, so I must've been, you could check the year, but I think I was based on where the classroom was. I would have had to have been in either seventh or eighth grade. Would that be right? Eighth grade, I think. So it was like a tiny kid, like just trying to show up to class. I wasn't political. I wasn't talking about anything, but either way, I'm American. It was totally bizarre, man. 
Yep, that's exactly right. And the push comes to shove, I'm on Texas's side. But you know, it's it's the weirdest thing, man. You find you find everything, man. It's like you find all types of people in terms of of weird experiences, man. Really weird experiences with that stuff. And um, so yeah, when people would would come at me in uh, when I went off to college, I was actually shocked at how soft everybody was. You know, it's like gosh, but people. I don't understand this. This is something that 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 I really don't understand. If you've grown up with a lot of conflict, whether it's in your house or in your youth, you don't want that in your life, man. Like, and I don't mean conflict like you can't handle it, but you don't go looking for it. You don't go out and pee into the wind. That's something that is always lost on me. It's It really is a, a, a big factor in terms of how I conduct myself in general. Is it's like, why, like, you got to do things based on some kind of principle and Lord knows, um, I've, I've, you know, taken punches from my principles, you know, like in terms of standing up to people who were just, you know, thugs that outnumbered me when I was coming up. But, um, it's not something I go and I seek out. Like I don't see, I mean, that kind of constant stuff is exhausting. So when you see me in comics gate, um, When you see me in Comics Gate, um, I'm here because I believe in it. I believe in it. It's not because I need to, that thrill of what's it like to be in a difficult situation where you're outnumbered, outgunned. I've had enough of that. I just, I really am tired. You know? I'm almost 50 years old, man. I've raised two children. You know what I mean? I'm not seeking that out. But I love this country, and I love what it stands for, and I love art, and I love artistic freedom. And I'm never going to be okay with um, being on the side of thugs because it's convenient or it's financially expedient. And I mean, I've been proving that for 47 years, and, um, and so what I will never understand is why people seek out conflict randomly control randomly and i'm not talking about um i think is the best way i can put it in terms of things when i see creators who are being excluded from being able to sell their wares at c2e2 things like that those are real situations you know those are real things that affect people when i see folks like myself um, having my career in academia stifled because I want to teach representational artwork and because I want to teach classical skills by people who are saying they support people of these particular groups, man, it's exhausting. Like I said, it's been years and years of this, man. I'm tired, you know? Hey, hey speaking of people who it's always great to see, channel member of my brother in Comics Gate, Michael Bancroft, it's great to see you. Dude, I'm telling you, Cranberry, though, but here's the funny thing about that, dude right? Old man Schaaf. Amen, Stephen. Amen. This is the thing that's big, man. And you're tired of not being able to rate my streams. Michael, you're going to help me. I'm an elderly person. Uh, <laughs> someone, I told you, Michael, you missed this, but earlier I was talking about this and I said, somebody on mail and stream found out that I had two kids going off to college. And they go, I didn't know you were that old. I said, I am. Can you not see how tired my, <laughs> my eyes are? I've been at this for so long. I am not green. I have worked in the industry. I've done all of this work, man. And it's like, I've, like, I didn't just come out of nowhere. But here's the thing, right? Here's what I, I will say. It didn't matter to me. It's never mattered to me if I was the person being purely having the stuff directed at, or I wouldn't be in comics gate, man. It's like, uh, when I heard people telling me that they were going to teach racism against my wife and my late father-in-law who I loves race and, you know, teach people that white people are evil. I didn't like it then either. My principles when it comes to that stuff are consistent. And, um, I don't, I'm for, and why I like Rhode Island's history is I'm for religious freedom. I'm for all of those things. And if we don't all have it, then none of us, really can say we have it if we don't all have free speech and print having principles when it's not convenient um is easier when you've had no choice 
you know it's it's easier maybe when you have no choice when you're young you know and so i've been, i've just been on this journey of trying to find the people who actually want to support me and my family and who um who actually have principles i don't care if we disagree i don't care you know about about the the general you know or with the more specific things but we've got to at least agree on the fact that um artists should support other artists that's it artists should support other artists and there's um someone said to me i was well, again i was talking to my brother who's amazing i love this dude um he's 63 now i think and we just have a friendship that cuts across you know locations i grew up in tennessee grew up in new york and you know it's like we have just very different um different in theory experiences but art really unites us and i was talking to him about it and he said you know what the thing is with places like c2e2 in these places is they can always fall back on that trope of we're a private you know business and so we can do what we want here's the thing i don't i'm not talking about the top down people i'm talking about the people who go along with it man do you know what i mean and i think that that artists um artists should never even need to know what somebody thinks about ingredient x to think they have um they shouldn't be discriminated against in an art forum that's it it's that simple you know and you can't really like it's the weirdest thing about it's the weirdest thing about my time in academia but also my time in the art world you know is that i've noticed that um yeah i've noticed that there's a lot of there's a lot of attempts to do quote quote the right thing right the opposite of of what uh the experience i was describing but i just need people to be objective to succeed that's all i really need i need people to go holy crap this guy paints really well do you know anybody who paints as well as this guy wow this guy really has principles wow this guy but like that's all like i don't i don't need my comic to be the greatest comic in the universe but i just need you know that and one of the things that attracted me um to this comic skate space man was those those initial experiences like i wrote ethan and was like hey man you know um i hadn't had a great experience with anybody in comics i mean i'd had great oh my god i want to hire you stuff and then <laughs> not turning into work but um but it wasn't like i was was particularly confident that anything comic related would be any different than academia the same you know office politics stuff that's what i saw when i was applying for comics marvel dc all of that stuff right and um so I, I never really had any illusions about that. And and certainly we've had our share of that in Comic Skate, right? But um but that really was for me it was it was Ethan and um just sort of said, My God, this stuff is really good, man. And you know, it was the same thing. I reached out to um Thomas Jane when he did the intro for Dave Stevens Rocketeer. And Thomas Jane was like, This stuff is really great. What do you want to do? And he hired me for a short story for um a relaunch they were working on for Alien Worlds, uh, written by Bruce Jones, famous writer of the Alien World stuff for, um, for uh, you know, that Dave Stevens illustrated. So it was really crazy. So if I'm in a place where um, where ability can be recognized, like with teaching, I'm going to do okay. Um, that's, that's a fortunate thing. But I think that, um, yeah, it's, it's a weird... It's a weird thing to navigate, man. It's a weird thing to navigate because I don't always, um, I'm so, I'm so passionate about the things that I do. I'm so passionate about the work. Like when I was like, I think, um, I think one of the, the things I think about and, and maybe the Ed Piscor thing and all that stuff is, was a part of this, but you know, I was in those early days. Um, I was seeing people under a tremendous amount of stress and I never, and I feel that right now. Um, but, um, my personally, but I see people under a tremendous amount of stress and my natural reaction is I notice it and I try to reach out and I try to tell people, Hey, you know, let me be one more positive thing. And there's certain people like, I want to talk a little bit if I can about John Malin and why this, this C2E2 thing has been really bothering me and, and frustrating me. Let me tell you something about John. John Whenever he said something, whenever I've interacted with John, he's been on the level. If he says something, he's going to do something, he's going to do it. Uh, John will never allow me to work for him for free. Ever. He just won't. Even when it's something I randomly cobble together. Like, I'll go, hey, John, I have this idea for a trailer. He's like, I want to use that. I want to use that as a logo, and I got to give you some money for it. 
I'm like, all right, cool, John. Like, that's great. And John, you don't see this because, well, you probably do. I mean, you see me stream with him before, but, but John, um, John has really gone out of his way, you know, and I, I see maybe my definition of going out of one's way, cause it's the stuff that I do, but I really think that way. I go, wow, you've really made an effort. Can we say that? We'll say made an effort. Um, but I, I, I mean it as I always use that term, go out of your way, but I'm not sure I know exactly what that particular thing means specifically, but man, John, for me, um, has just been like, you know, I want to hire you to do a pinup of your character for the visions book. That's going to be coming out with Godlike. And, you know, like I'm doing, I did a, a double page spread in that book with my character. And I did a single page spread and John's been great to me, man. Um, it's, it's, it's crazy, you know? And, um, yeah, man, it's, it's, that's the stuff because that stuff puts money in your bank account. And when you're an independent and you're in the space, that is so important. It's so important. You can't, it's, it, like I made a, it was a joke. I was, <laughs> I made a joke. <laughs> I don't think he'd mind me saying, telling this tale out of school. I made a joke for John with John where I said, um, um, I said, John, I thought I was just doing this for the cause, like as a joke when he's like, how much did I say I was going to pay you? And, uh, and he goes, no, no, Sean, no, <laughs> you know, John, man, he's like, no, we don't do things for the cause here. We do things for money. If you work and you contribute, you should be paid. And, and I go, John, I was kidding. I was kidding, man. I go, just so you know, the cause is my slang term for a million dollars. <laughs> Oh man, I tell you, man, I don't know, I don't know what it is, but when I'm on those streams, sometime I was on a stream, I can't even remember what we were talking about. Shane said something on a stream, maybe it was a week or two ago. God, time is blended together, guys. Time is blended together. I've been, I've been so wiped. I've been working so hard, and I know you guys know that, and I know you guys work hard too. So I'm not, but I've been, I've been really tired. And um, but Shane said something on a stream, and I was laughing so hard I couldn't breathe. And I'm, I'm a reasonably easy laugher, you know, like I will, I, I laugh. I, I like to laugh. It's fun. And I was laughing so freaking hard. I was like in pain and I needed it. I needed a really good laugh. You know, I needed a really good laugh, but yeah, John, John is, has been great. And, and, you know, even Razor Fist as well. It's like, um, it's, uh, it was cool, but John is for me, head and shoulders above, um, almost anybody and that's that's uh, that's just proof to me of his his character in terms of um you know when he needs something he's always just been like you know now we, we're, we're doing this because we're trying to actually make it possible for artists to do that and i think it's because he knows how hard it is we're i think we're the same age i'm reasonably sure we are sorry um but you know he makes almost ex ex identical pop culture references to certain things and um I mean, I know he's 29, but you know, and, uh, but yeah, he's always, he gets it, man. He gets it. I mean, nothing again. I loved, uh, Tom McDonald's new single. Speaking of other people, I, I'm really inspired by because he was talking about like, again, the whole, all these people want to make up that stuff is handed to you. People want to try to, you know, throw shade at you and say, oh, well, well, this person hangs out with this person or that. Person. It's like, oh my God, man. And all it's about is keeping your mind on work. You have to work so hard and not get distracted by the bullshit. And I am very grateful for my no bullshit people that I have around me and the people who actually think about my family and their financial well-being. You guys included, you channel members, you guys sending super chats. Because I'll tell you what, man, um, I've been definitely feeling it lately. Exhaustion from just six years of being in this space and grinding it out and working and all of the, the stuff that goes with it, man. It's a lot. I'm going to check with the chat, guys. Sorry. I just want to sort this wash out here. Let me see here. Walking and, or walking and chewing gum and streaming and talking, man. That's what it is while you paint. Um, yeah. <laughs> Aunt B cause. Absolutely. Yep, Eric Huffles. And I had never heard of Kayfabe either. There you go. Yeah, the cause. My bank account. Yeah. My wife and kids. Definitely. Oh, I would love to do some stuff for the cause. Yeah. You'd be shocked. Um. Gray Wolf, his books were very art house. Yes. Oh, we're talking about Ed Piscor. Yep, absolutely. Kata. Yeah. Um, <laughs> yeah. 
Um, yeah, it's funny. I was watching him for his Tim Vigil stuff. Vacation time for Sean. Oh, God. Yeah, I think I have my first vacation in a very long time um, coming up. And it's tied to a lot of other stuff, you know, like for me, like, you know, parenting stuff, changes, and parent nostalgia. But, um, yeah, I got I need a vacation, and I just, you know, oof. Yeah, I, I, I'm going to do a second chance campaign sooner rather than later. I may still be fulfilling some Nosferu. I may still have books left to ship out, but it's not going to affect that. But my family and I, we need um, we need to get another campaign going because uh, this work is hard and uh, it's crazy. It's crazy work. So I'm going to fi be figuring out what that is as soon as I can because, uh, yeah, it's, it's very strange because, <clears throat> excuse me, I tend to think a lot about, um, I tend to think about a lot of things and sometimes I forget to secure my own oxygen mask or make sure my family and I are taken care of as much as I, I, uh, should, um, because it's just, there's so much work involved in doing this stuff. But, you know, like I said, it's a new space. No one, uh, you know, you've got the mail-in method. Thank God for that. Um, and you've got the support of you guys, my channel members, people supporting me, um, yeah, exactly. That's right. Doesn't need to be said. Doesn't need to be said. Yeah. Um, let's see here. Oh my gosh. Went to Nashville for a weekend and it chilled. It snowed and um, the evening arrived very beautiful against city lights. Yeah, but man, it's treacherous driving there um, uh, in the snow because they don't have salt like we do. You know, they don't have salt. Um, and someone's replying to Michael, but I can't even see Michael's comment, man. Holy cow. Yeah, I need to stop slacking, says Michael. Yeah, he's never slacked a day in his life. Oh my god, yeah. We work. It's like me and being it's like me and being positive, right? It's um I don't ever want people to to be under the misapprehension that you know, you've got five years of streams to look at, by the way. So again, as as John Malin I think invented, I don't think it was ever said before, catch me outside. Um but, but um I've got five years of streaming that you can look to. But just because I am um, positive, enthusiastic, and whatever, it doesn't mean that I can't, I'm not, you know, that's what I'm looking for. That I don't have days where I feel down, where I don't feel exhausted. Like, we're all just people working our tails off. And sometimes I think that one of my worst, um, my worst qualities, um, and I said this to um, my doctor when I went to go meet my uh, doctor for the first time. I said, something you need to know about me is I'm what's called an under-reporter. That if I'm under great duress, uh, like if I have a health problem, I'll go, should I call the doctor? <laughs> I'm terrible at that stuff, man. And yes, there is John Malin's amazing campaign right there. The convention specials. Back it. Make it happen. Eiffelcroft. Indeed, my brother. My brother. Um, but it's, um, yeah, it's, it's a thing that I will secure my own oxygen mask uh, last. And uh, that's not what you're supposed to do. So, yeah, sometimes, sometimes I think it's, um, yeah, it's something I, I've got to work on. And because, uh, you know, we all need we all need enthusiasm and we all need um, we all need inspiration and we all need to see, you know, we need to see something coming in for the work financially for our families, you know. And um, that's what Comics Gate, you know, for me was a big part of of you know, the process, which is if I work hard and I do great work that I'm going to be able to do what I need to do. And, um, it's, it's kind of a novel thing because, um, while this, the, the most, um, politically, you know, intense area of financially you'll ever be in is academia. There's so much we're doing it for the cause there. It's ridiculous. And it's, they're talking out of both sides of their mouths. And, um, what I like about Comic Skate is you can you're sort of free to say, yeah, like this no money, no book, no art, no, this can't happen. Like, and that's great. <laughs> okay, good, slacker. Uh Cranberry Landry says to Michael Bancroft, create a fate. Um, that blue looks so bright. Oh, thank you so much. Gorgeous piece, Sean. Um, I'm also working on my comic while I watch. Very cool, Creative Fate. Excellent, excellent. Yeah. I mean, I know Mike's uh said this and I've said this on a few streams, but the colors of the book came out so perfect to what they were on the paintings. This print job on book one, if you guys, if you backed it, 
I mean, it's so weird. Like, people get the book, and it's like, they, and I get it. I get why. They're like, holy crap, this is eight and a half by 11. This is big. Like, they knew it, but it's weird when you get it. And then the paper stock and the colors. Holy cow, man. That book is freaking beautiful. And I'm so, the first two art books, the same uh, printer did them. The same thing with those. I work with these folks and have worked with these folks. Um, printed in the USA and um, printed to to make the paintings look like how they're supposed to look. And I'm very proud of that print job, man. It's And it costs money to make it printed that nice. I could go with a cheaper route, but it wouldn't look like that and it wouldn't be that quality or it wouldn't be printed in the States. And I'm not saying I'm always going to do that because, again, it's got to – financially, it's got to work. Um, that's what I'm trying to do. That's that's the effort I'm trying to make. All right, let's see here. Let's get that light moved over a little bit and get that liner brush out there and see if I can focus. There we go. There's the focus I was looking for. There we are. There we go. There it comes. Yeah, guys. Book two is going to... I think book two is going to be a step up. I mean, I always plan for it that way, but you never know. You never know. What's up, Evan? How are you doing? Look forward to getting it. Have not received it yet. Excellent. So what number... So where are you in this? If you're in the States, I was just talking about this earlier. Um, We're at... I think Canada is up to 400. Um, international, we are still figuring out. Um, and the States is up to 300. What am I on? <laughs> oh. um, I think it's 370 or 80 something. I'm not sure. So it's on its way. It's coming. Hand packed with love by yours truly. Um, I never do this, but I probably have 50 layers on my Eiffel Tower. You know. You know. But that's what they all say, right? Oh my God, I never I never do this. Just saying, Michael. <laughs> Michael's a kindred spirit, man. He gets me, man. Yeah, he's my brother from another mother down under. That's the way it is. And man, I feel like... um, Yeah. Like, we... It's, it's weird, man. I, I don't even want to think about how long I've known Michael at this point because we met. It, that was a fast meet and get to know somebody. It was like, hi, do you want to come on my show? Oh, crap. You do all this stuff for Ethan? Oh, wow. You're Comics Gate? Oh, I know your stuff from Instagram. Oh, I'm going to, like, that's great. You want, I'm, why don't you launch your book on my channel? Seriously, Michael, what the hell was that? That was a trip, man. Yeah. And then it was like, oh, you know, um, <laughs> with Eric Weathers, it was the same thing. You know, people were saying, hey, man, do you want to come on CG team? Oh, cool. That'd be fun. <laughs> want to be regular on CG team? What the hell? Okay. Oh, wow. So you're, yeah. Tail end. 631. Gotcha. 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 Yeah. Um, crazy. Holy moly. <laughs> Glutton for punishment. He's <laughs> the gate time. Yeah, that's right. Oh, man. You guys are killing me. Yeah, that's right. You like torture. I'm sorry. I know. I'm sorry you missed the campaign, Mark. The second chance is coming quick. We're going to do that soon. I, I can't wait much longer. It's it's getting ridiculous. Um, yeah, 631. Got you, got you, got you. Yeah. We met at a very strange time in my life. Isn't that the truth? I remember it like it was yesterday. We were in Paris. <laughs> we were on top of the Eiffel Tower. <laughs> Romy, when will the team reunite? I know, man. I know. Holy cow. Yeah, things have been nuts. I love hanging out with those guys. It's great to see you, brother. I'm pretty sure I just put something in the mail for you, my friend. Did you get your notification? Um... Yeah, dude, it's, uh, I, I talk to Eric all the time. Eric and I, um, meet to talk art every, every Tuesday. So yeah, so we've got, we've got a regularly sort of scheduled thing on, uh, on Tuesday. Um, and then, um, I haven't actually hung out with Mike, you know, just like off stream in a while, man. But yeah, man, it's crazy. I was, I texted, um, I got a text from Vaughn. I contacted him recently cause I sent him his, um, his, uh, head sketch and his book, and um, yeah, I'm in touch with all those guys, man, I'm in touch with all those guys, and we still have the room, I think, yeah, yes, I promise I will, I will, when are you moving, <laughs> creative fate, when are you moving, <laughs> let me know, 
<laughs> this made me nervous. Oh my god, you guys are too funny. Um, holy lord. Yeah, I mean those were. I mean, it's it's crazy. You meet people like um, like. Uh, this is it's a wild space like uh, the same thing goes with john the same thing goes with you know everybody i've met it's wild you just think i didn't know this person fine and, and you know what's funny is um it's a little bit like college because you meet all these people you're in the same space but you don't really get to know who anybody is for a while so because you're all in the space it's like it takes a while to kind of actually get to know people it's weird because it's this intense thing you know, I was here, I was, I remember, um, you know, being in here in the beginning and I've got my copy of, um, you know, uh, my copy of Red Rooster over there, um, from that campaign from way back when the first fan art I think I ever did, or, or just art I did on my Instagram of comic skate, you know, and I remember thinking, eh, I got a big fan following. I don't know. <laughs> this was early comic skate. There was no, you know, um, it wasn't as somewhat secure as it is now even though that's that's you know it's a battle every single day but i did something for for that and i just i remember thinking back then that all of the books that i was backing and the people who were in it would still be there and be on you know a couple issues in and you know all of that stuff so yeah you don't really know when you first come in you don't know who's really sticking around and, and what that's about i've stuck around now for six years so that's for sure. I'm definitely sticking around. Eric Weathers has been here for a very long time. Bancroft has been here for a very long time. I've now officially been here for a long time. It's like craziness, man. We do what we do. We work our tails off. And we do it for you guys because we love you. That's what we do. Oh, I'm in the early stage of house hunting, so no exact timing. Okay, cool. Thank God. Um, we were so we were we were so innocent back then. <laughs> Those were the early days. What's up, Crenshaw? FAO, how are you doing? Hail to you, my friend. And yes, hail Shant and chat. Um, Michael Bancroft, did you ever read about the P-51 pilot who chased the, oh my gosh, Messerschmitt uh, BF-109 under the, that is insane. How did that work? My God. Yep. They're speaking of on there's Kataru Wish Hunter and the sign up for Terror in the Trenches 2. The link is in the description. So make sure you do. To be fair, I haven't hung out with anyone in a bit. No, dude, that wasn't a, this is the, see Michael, Michael, do me a favor, Michael. Explain to people in as few words as you possibly can, because you got to type it, the conversation I had about you, about internal monologue and when I say something <laughs> versus what it's like and how people perceive it and how frustrating it is. It's, <laughs> it's like, it'd be nice if you called your mother every once in a while. <laughs> Holy cow, you kill me. Cam, what's up? I kind of uh, like that CG naturally forms a bunch of little subgroups. Yeah, absolutely. Um, it's human nature to hang with people you identify with the most. Does it mean you don't respect the larger picture? Absolutely right, Cam. That's profound and could not have said it better. Like, that's fantastic. Yeah, man. Did I just get a text from somebody? Like, just, just want to double check and make sure, like, my wife wasn't, like, going, I'm locked out of the house or something. Um, yeah, now that is some precision flying. I've been to the Eiffel Tower. And, um, you know what the, the weirdest thing about it is, is I went to France, uh, and I didn't know anything about Bon Dessine because I was a kid. We were just stopping there on our way to see family in India and family in Austria. Cause I'm a fourth Austrian. And, um, one of the things is, um, I had no idea that there was this massive comic book culture there. And if I had, my God, that would have been amazing. Yeah. Amen, man. Amen. Yeah. She can't wait. That's right. That's right. Patience is a virtue. You guys are cracking me up so much today, man. Holy cow. <coughs> Excuse me. Sorry. Mm. Yeah. Oh, man. I, I I appreciate you guys. I love you, man. It it uh, I've, I've been feeling really, really wiped. And, and it's just it's a lot of, you know, you're it's a lot of kids being grown up and it's a lot of just man. I, I I've definitely been thinking a lot about my academic career all the time I put in, all of the work that I put into that kind of stuff. And sometimes you just need a little, really a little pick-me-up. You know, it's funny. It's like, um, you guys know this if you've ever worked somewhere for a long time and things like that. Um, it's, especially if you work in teaching or you work in, in things like that or art or whatever, um, it can't be the gods you pray to, but every now and again, it's nice to have people say, hey, 
um, you know, we're going to give you a promotion or we're going to do this or we're going to do that, that kind of thing. And I think about that a lot, which is um, just in terms of, you know, just getting getting that kind of support is something that I think is why Comic Skate exists, you know, because you had a lot of people who are working their tails off have been there for a while and they're like, look, I don't think I need to be king of the universe, you know, but, um, you know, gosh, I, I'd like to think I'm not so easily having my career destroyed. <laughs> and it was, just, it's the same thing in academia. You see it from Jordan Peterson. You see it from a lot of people. And, and, um, you know, I, like when I do the channel member credits or, you know, and all that stuff, it's, I appreciate it so much. I can't even, you know, my brain is pudding, but I can't over, oh, my favorite number was there for a minute and 33 likes. Oh, that's always great. I love the number 33. Good morning, Dean. How are you doing, brother? Another great artist. It's great to see you, man. Yeah. Every one of my friends who became a teacher, um, has gotten out of teaching because they all say it has become intolerable, much like what you say. Yeah. I mean, it's, um, this is the thing, right? Uh, People cannot, um, people cannot exist without, you know, any kind of, of support in some shape, form, or fashion. And the older we get, I think the more we look at our careers and our choices and we're just like, and, and it's a, it's a, for at least for me, I can't speak for everybody else, but we just think, am I around people who, you know, that guy, it's, again, academia has been on my mind, but do people notice the work, you know, or do they only notice the work when you're gone? <laughs> Does that make sense? And it's weird. Yeah. Number 33, Larry Bird. That's right. Boston, baby. Uh, yep. Uh, Michael Bancroft. It was Lieutenant Bill Overstreet flying, um, uh, P 51 B named Berlin express. The BF one Oh nine pilot tried to get away and flew under the Eiffel. That is insane. Eiffel, um, Overstreet, uh, followed and shot the one Oh nine. That is insane. Wow. Yep, I watched the new Fallout show. It was pretty good. Um, oh, shoot, it just jumped. A uh, few uh, dirty scenes I wish they uh, didn't put in, but otherwise, fun 50s post-apocalyptic show. Very cool. So first, let's pray to the Vulcan, ugly god of forge and flame, and also wise Minerva. That's right, now we glorify your name. My wife loves Star Trek. I love Star Trek, too. Um, uh, may you aid our ship's designers now and find it in your heart to please help the lowest bidders who've constructed all of her parts. I love it, Simply Green. I love it. I don't think it ever gets better than that, man. I don't think it ever gets better than that, guys. Thank you so much, man. So if you haven't liked this stream yet, please do. You guys have been doing a killer job doing that anyway. Um, if you're not subscribed, please do subscribe, man. Every bit counts. Every bit counts, man. And uh, it all is, look, when it comes to things like leaving comments on streams once they're published or even old streams, all of that stuff. And I know a lot of you guys make an effort to do that. And I appreciate it. Every bit helps because we are in a culture war period. And when it comes to that, your support financially and every other way possible promotion and, and backing the books and sending super chats and being a channel members, your support is our sword and shield. Actually, I mean, it's like we've got to have our talent. We've got to have our work. But if we have nowhere to sell our wares and nowhere to be, it's impossible, man. Yep. Uh, let me see here. Oh, my God. My glasses just fell. The evil that men do lives on after them. The good is often interred with their bones. Yeah. I mean, it's and I think, you know, I think that it's it's. Yeah, it's it's the the, the fighting for years and years and years that um that is is just it's the thing you know like it's the it's the thing that is so difficult to do and you've got to be driven by by certain principles you've got to make have you know this deep drive within yourself to do these things and i'm like i said uh it, the, your support means the world to me it buys brushes it does all of that stuff and when it's not there those things don't get bought and those things aren't possible so yeah there is uh no doubt in my mind that um that you know there should be no doubt in your mind i should say that your support um means everything for us being able to do this stuff because it is very very complicated and difficult and i applaud your patience i applaud your support and i'm just going to keep doing what i do in terms of working my tail off and trying to keep doing this stuff and jehovah jireh and uh <laughs> and uh 
you know, uh, thank you guys so much for being here. I got to wrap up. It's uh, two hours and 14 minutes. I haven't eaten anything today. I just realized, um, I went to bed at six in the morning, woke up at, uh, working, woke up at 11. I don't think, um, yeah, I don't think I've maybe eaten in 24 hours. <laughs> no, that can't be right. Not 24 hours, 12 hours. Sorry. Not 24. Um, but I haven't eaten in a while and I probably should get some food in my system. But thank you guys so much for, for being here and supporting art, supporting painting, supporting this channel. I'm just going to keep working hard, and I'm going to be launching the Nosfero Second Chance campaign soon because uh, we got I got to get that going for my family, and I got to get that going for my sanity. So uh, thank you guys so much for being here. I want all of you guys to have a wonderful Sunday. Um, I want you to take care of yourselves, stay positive, and surround yourself with art, good people, and good things, um, and... Uh, and that stuff will give you the strength to keep going. That's what I do, and that's what you guys are a part of. Do you know what I mean? So absolutely right, man. You will be soon, brother. You will be soon, I promise. And thank you, Cranberry Landers. I do appreciate that so much. And I know I've got something in the mail for you, too, because I remember packing that up. Um, and thank you, guys. And, yeah, God bless my family for supporting me. I appreciate it. Yes, thank you so much, guys. Yes, I will get myself a dang sandwich. I promise. I promise, guys. So as I always like to say, um, and let me just start with this. This is my new thing. This is all absolutely in honor of Art Bell. Um, from the heart of Lovecraft country, in the birthplace of American religious liberty. Thank you for joining me, Jonathan Jetty, here at Jonathan Jetty Art. And as I like to always end my streams, speak easy, stay gold, keep the faith. And peace be with you guys, because that's what Shanth means. It means peaceful one. So if I can bring you guys a little bit of peace, uh, then I'm living up to my name. So thank you guys so much. God bless you, Gen X Catholic. Indeed, sir. Um, and uh, I will absolutely get some food. Ciao. God bless all. Everybody have a great day. Thank you, Stephen Rockwood. Thank you, channel members. And you guys are all going to be in the credits. And I will see you guys very, very soon. Take care.